Hey guys and welcome to a podcast I'm very excited to release. Being a podcast with Monko Zanke who has recently returned to both RuneScape and YouTube. Me and my crew both had the pleasure of talking to Monko Zanke together and if you're wondering, to avoid any confusion, we've uploaded the exact same podcast to our channels at the exact same time. Anyways, when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to a podcast with Mr. My Crew and myself and the man, the myth, the legend behind the Monko Math, Monko Zonki. Hello. And that's probably a voice a lot of people haven't heard in a long, long time unless they got their videos, uh, the videos in the recommended. Which they most likely have actually. Judging by the amount of support you've gotten since you've come back. Yeah, it's been awesome. Unexpected, but awesome. <laughs> so, so Manko, I, I do have uh, a question I'd like to ask pretty much from the get-go. So, 10 minutes, you, you pick up 3 euros. How much money do you make per hour? Um, well, if you extrapolate that over an entire hour, I think that's going to give you about um, 18 euros an hour. That's some beautiful Manko math right there, dude. <laughs> Jesus Thank you. Christ. I think I uh, didn't. Have you seen some of? <laughs> I, I was really bad. I know. I just had to. I've seen some extreme versions of like people picking up a hundred dollar bill, or whatever, on the ground in like two minutes and saying it's like you know I don't know a few thousand grand, a few a uh, few grand per hour or something. But uh like, how did that all even start? Like, do you remember, Monkle? Like, what actually caused it? Was it the thing about the invention offhand or something? That's why I remember. <laughs> So I think the, as far as I can understand it, because um, Monko Math kind of became a thing after I stopped making videos. I think pretty recently after, but um, I was I was out of the community and no longer paying attention to what was going on when it started becoming a common saying. Um, and I, I've kind of gone back and looked a little bit into it, and I believe it's because um, so I I haven't made a whole lot of money making videos where I claimed rates. Um, but there, the two main categories where I did, I think was for kind of some lower level bosses like Armadil, Zami, stuff like that. And then for the Slayer guides, um, and the ones where I tested my own rates were for the Slayer guides where I'd pretty much just do a task or two and then just say, uh, this is how much I got in this much time, you know, extrapolate that out to an hour. Um, so that's my best guess for where it started, but it, also was five years ago it totally could have been yeah. a different video and i'm just not aware of it it's crazy because like i just i just couldn't remember anything ever being done with like like wrong maths or completely exaggerated stuff from back in the day so when everyone started saying it it's like it's just what's being said now you know it's just that thing that people have latched onto i guess it's strange isn't it? I'm fairly certain it might have been like your either your Armadil or Bandov Sky because I remember. Actually, I should probably look it up, but the 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 GP per hour rate was fairly high because you got uh, a bunch of drops in a few hours. I don't know if you remember yourself, maybe which video that might have been. Like one of the bosses at Goddard's Dungeon One, you got fairly lucky there. I don't remember which though. I'm not saying it's the origin. Oh, that of was Michael that Mike. was definitely Bandos. I think I even made a video on bandos because i just got an insane amount of drops in two hours um and i can remember that one specifically because that was a pretty awesome day but um i yeah i don't remember what i claimed the money per hour to be in the in the bandos guide i uploaded at all apparently it says two to three three mil per hour which uh, that, I mean, that's just in the title though so i have no idea uh and hmm. i don't think that was based off of me testing the rate i think that was just roughly what the money per hour at bandos with you know mid to high tier gear was understood to be at the time mm -hmm. yeah so it's, Monko it's, it's an interesting <laughs> but i'm happy to be a part of a meme now mm -hmm. <laughs> regardless need, of how it started yeah you need to embrace it one day and just do a video that is just completely dumb that'd be a great like april fool's video idea mm, definitely might end up being your most popular video, actually. Just show like a <laughs> montage of getting drops from all these different bosses and then be like, if you do the same thing as me, it's 20 mil per hour. <laughs> I did that and it got quite a few dislikes, but hey, it's fine. It was, it was April Fool's. 
<laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, oh, I done an April Fool's video like two years ago with that type of thing, and uh, I put the you know the dreamscape uh, oh. tune, and I opened up Notepad and stuff, and I didn't <laughs> play anything. I, I think I, I remember that now vaguely. <laughs> I remember you also doing like karaoke and, and killing cows and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, some weird stuff. You had a weird clan, dude. Like uh, events. Yeah. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. So, uh, Munkle, uh, there are a lot of people that know you, obviously. But for the people that don't know you, could you give some background information as to who you are, are now kind of thing? Sure. So I started, um, I've played RuneScape since late 2006 early 2007 in that range um i don't remember the exact date um i started uploading videos in 2011 um i mostly for the first start first part just focused on progress i would you know make vlogs this is what pretty much everyone who did ringscape videos was doing at the time uh just kind of like recording what they did throughout the day and then talking about it um eventually that turned into kind of like road to max cape series um and then eventually i started making guides and the guides is really what um, started to take things off. Uh, my channel wasn't getting a whole lot of views before that. Um, and the, you know, making guides, especially like skilling guides or um, boss killing guides was really what started to uh, help YouTube work out. Um, so mm -hmm. I kind of continued doing that for a couple of years um, until about the 2015 range. Um, I quit YouTube for a period of, I believe, about six four to six months um, just because I had changed living situations in real life um, and I was a lot busier um, and I was, I uh, had been going to school, but I also started working a part-time job along with that. And I didn't really have a whole lot of time. Um, I eventually came back for a few videos and this was around the time that God Wars 2 released. Mm -hmm. um, and I made guides on a couple of those bosses and I, just a couple update videos and stuff. And then I ended up, quitting almost for good for about a period of four and a half, five years after that. Um, and that brings us to today. And I, the main reason I quit um, was just because of time constraints. It was really, really hard to get any time at all to play RS. Um, working as much as I was and um, doing class and trying to balance a social life as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it became really overwhelming. And I think I just got really burnt out. And initially when I stopped, I had intentions of coming back, um, you know, within a, a couple months doing the same thing over again. Um, mm -hmm. But I moved in with a bunch of my friends um, in a big communal house, and I really had no time or space to play um, RuneScape or make videos on it for uh, the two years that I lived there. Um, and wow. it just kind of, I always had this plan to come back eventually and make videos, and it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And yeah months turned into four and a half years <laughs> wow this is always the way life getting in the way and all of that right can i ask how old you are is that side that you're able to reveal sure um i'm 25 i'm still in school and the main reason why is i didn't uh start university until i was 20. Uh, i got a late start i worked for a couple of years after i graduated um, and I also changed my major, so that added an extra two years onto my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. And studying just takes so long nowadays anyway, so it's understandable. Yeah, yeah, it's a full four years, and I, I pushed that into, you know, five and a half by changing my major, so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. B busy onky, uh, coming in, dude. <laughs> so... Wait, so you you said you worked uh, in between. That means, if, if that's around the same period you did a lot of videos, you didn't really ever go full-time in terms of RuneScape content. Because uh, you did upload very consistently before, uh, like, 2013, 2014 kind of thing? Yeah, I was full-time for that year. Um, I didn't, I was, well, I was in class, um, so not full, full-time. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But, um, yeah, I didn't have a job for about a year. Um, and I was financially supporting myself just off of YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I think... Pretty uh, much like you, Protox, then. Yeah, basically, yeah. And I think sick of it at the time as well. Like, he used the money to pay for college, if I'm correct. I'm sure Michael knows sick of it. 
fairly certain. Yeah. Oh, I've used hey, this. Hey, what's up, guys? It's <laughs> Oh man. Uh, what what he... a legend! I love him. Damn man, his voice is so iconic. Just like Munkles, actually, because um, but when you did return, right? I, I'm not. It must have been you. You did say it was Steam, right? But was it just Steam? Well, so I have been playing, had been playing old school for a while um, prior to the Steam release coming out. So for the past, I don't know, two to three years, I have been playing old school, not consistently at all, but um, like paying for Bond membership for a couple of months and then quitting for a couple of months, and then coming back for a couple of months, really just depending on the cycle of of uh, class and work and how busy I am. Um, and so I guess due to that, I was a little more um, in tune with the the RuneScape community at large than I would have been otherwise. Um, so the idea of returning to RS3 was more um, present than it would have been if I you know, was completely removed from any sort of RuneScape community at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I guess linking into that with being on and off on RuneScape and stuff, have you been keeping track of like how RuneScape uh, and like the YouTube scene and, and all of that has been going? Question. Well, in terms of the game, I know that um, both Old School and RS3 have kind of experienced a, a spike in popularity um, during the past year. I don't know how much of that is related to the pandemic. Um, I don't know how much of that is related to things like archaeology um, and also major updates in Old School. Um, but I know it, it, it kind of feels like games that are experiencing a bit of a second resurgence. Yeah, uh, I, I can see that. The the player base on RS3 recently in the last week has been averaging spikes like at peak times of over 50k, which is insane because normally it's like 35. So like with Steam release, with the advertising they've done with Steam release and with like kind of a second wave of the lockdowns and stuff in certain countries it's um, coming yeah it's, it's still coming i yeah, think it's, it's kind of crazy though isn't it to think the amount of people that are playing now it i don't know if that saying is like translatable in english but uh one one person's uh downfall is another person's bread or something yeah like i can i, I can understand what you're saying <laughs> I don't know what the English saying is, but you know, for for content creators, obviously, archaeology, the pandemic, now Steam, and some other updates like the DLC to archaeology or expansion, or then are very, very good. One hundred percent, yeah. We had like that low of like five months with no no uh, content after archaeology, but COVID definitely impacted that and everything. And I feel mm -hmm. like they're getting back in the swing of things, and we've had. Loads of decent little updates alongside the big updates like Orban. But then we've also had like Essence of Finality. We've yep. had uh, the Lunar Spells. We had ninjas. like so many different things, like the clue updates with the ninjas and stuff. Yeah, the titles and everything coming out. There's so much that is like continuously happening that is keeping people engaged now. We just need like at least one or two small updates a month. And I think everyone will be happy if we only get two big updates a year, as long as we get those small ones to to tie us over i'm curious so I a, what, yeah i was gonna say sorry, yeah, i have a question related to updates mm -hmm. do you guys think that updates that cause kind of like a significant change to gameplay in the way that i believe archaeology somewhat has um have a bigger impact on like the amount of active players than you know just like expanding a, a skill that already exists or you know introducing a boss with very similar mechanics to things we've seen in the past Ooh. I think it does because it mm -hmm. uh it like it encourages people to come back and experience that change, which it definitely did with archaeology. And if you look at the mining and smithing rework, I don't know what kind of impact that had. It yeah, was nowhere near as much. Yeah, no, nothing close. Like probably like one fifth or one sixth of what archaeology has done. And apparently, the mining and smithing rework took longer than archaeology, which is insane. What? Because spaghetti code. And, and no, they had to scrap it loads of times as well because it wasn't quite right and all of that. Like it took them years because they were talking about wow. it for so long and they just kept delaying it, right? And then like they said that the rework to the existing skill was harder than making a new skill because you didn't just have to think about what these things are doing when they come into the game. You also had to think about like 
how the changing each thing impacts heavily and so many different areas that already exist in you know especially with uh with smithing i'm i'm sure mm. i'm actually curious what michael thinks about stone spirits to be honest before i go on <laughs> what <laughs> I, i'm not yeah i i see how it would be so difficult to implement a smithing rework specifically because they had to rework what like the drop table of half the monsters in the game mm -hmm. and add useless things like stone spirits in along with them yeah, rips, rinse, skimmies, and all that other stuff on Slayer Tats, <laughs> dude. Normal alking, just enjoy your stone spirits, dude, and your salvage. You I probably mean, you still... triggered oh. like 10 people calling it a skimmy, by the way. Uh, I, wait, hold up. How are you supposed to say? Is it it's scimitar, right? Yes, yeah, a simmy is what but, people technically no. should call it, but everyone gets oh, angry or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But I 100% I, I, I guarantee Protox has triggered some people somewhere. It's skimmy. <laughs> if anyone disagrees, uh, I'll be at that table, that meme thing. Or whatever. <laughs> Changed my mind. It's skimmy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said that as a kid. I said skimmy, to be honest. You, you could but, afford a skimmy, dude? I had, uh, I mean, I had a couple of cool things. I got my first ever rune item as a noted item back in like 2005, and it was like a rune full helm. I was really happy. And I thought I got scammed because it was a note, and then I got put <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just played the ages at Hill Giants, man, getting this like 20k room full help. And then man <sighs> dropped it on the floor thinking he got scammed. And then I, a couple of days later, I figured out you could unknow it. Uh, it doesn't matter. We can move on. <clears throat> Beautiful story, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Monk, you've obviously like played, uh, what is it, like two weeks now? I think. Yeah, running up on the end of the first pod. So. What what is it you like the most, and what is it you look forward to? If you if you're kind of aware what the uh, the path of RuneScape is currently, so archaeology is the main thing that I've been focusing on since coming back. Um, partly because it's really fun, partly because it's AFK and very easy to do during class, um, and then getting the max cape back is is kind of a nice incentive. Um, however, there's a lot of stuff I really want to check out, Elite Dungeons being one of them. It's just been really hard to find time to do it yet. Um, and also Big Game, Big Game Hunter and just like exploring um, Not Fossil Island has Anacronium. been has been <laughs> fun. <laughs> not Fossil Island, great. Oh, Erosaurus. Hmm. Uh, so for Elite Dungeons, you say um, the time, right? But uh, you could you could potentially like make a series uh out of uh pvming like doing all the bosses you haven't tried before uh and, and a bunch of them are probably very doable solo i'm not sure how how good you're at pvm especially since you took a break but you could always give the early dungeons a solo shot but you know if you're learning it might not be the best idea that's true i did just recently buy some some gear that's kind of decent so if there's a good time to PVM and try some stuff out. It's probably now the main thing stopping me from doing that has just been um, homework for the most part, and also being out of town on the weekends. Plus, you uh -huh. you are ill, right? Yes, I did. I did contract the deadly disease. Um, I'm on the recovery now. I'm, I'm feeling pretty much close to 100. percent But I was pretty sick for a few days. I'm sure that took a giant hit in your schedule of like what you wanted to do on game and in real life as well as so catching up. Oh yeah, I barely even logged on. Yeah, <laughs> I mostly exactly. just laid on the couch and watched my lectures from a completely prone position. <laughs> how how bad was it one to ten? I'm I'm curious because you know everyone uh, uh, experiences it differently that gets infected. Um, honestly, it was like a. It was probably like a mid-tier flu. Um, it wasn't the worst. Um, I had one night where it was really bad with a high fever, um, but the fever broke sometime in the early morning, and then once the fever was was gone, it was really no big deal. It was just like any head cold. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Sure. Huh. Um. Uh, Michael did actually uh, pop that question, but you 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 have kept up with like YouTube and RuneScape content creation slash news, right? Like uh, from like a like a general viewpoint, correct? Oh, a little bit. Um, in terms of like when the mining and smithing rework came out, and when like Anachronia came out, 
um like i was aware of those things coming out um but i didn't really know much other than there's a new island or you know two of mm -hmm. the skills in game are different now because i was curious i'm not sure if you watched mod lee's patch notes back when you i'm fairly certain he did them at that point already i'm not yeah he was doing them for a long time yeah he was i think he had been doing them for like a year or so did in you uh when i stopped playing so yeah 24 yeah okay that did you uh did you know that mod lead uh, was let go from Giant X? I didn't. That was that was news oh. to me. Oh. I mean Micro knows more about it than me because he did a podcast with Mr. Lee. Yeah, they would they just said they didn't need him kind of thing, but then in my opinion the community events and stuff were pretty huge. So it's big rip. it was it was a sad thing. It was a big thing at the time, right? Same with Mod Shawnee leaving. Uh, there, there's been so many different things that have happened that obviously aren't the best, but at the same time, you can understand why some of them happened and and how it mm -hmm. all happened. I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily like super surprised about the modly thing, but it was the way they did it. Like they phoned him up on Discord and stuff and and told him that his contract was not going to be renewed, etc. Like mm -hmm. to to be contacted on Discord to be like made redundant that way. It's it was it was a very very bad thing. Uh, they could have handled it a lot better, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I, I thought I might have like come uh, come into like uh, Munkle's recommended. Actually, I'm not, I don't know. But so, Munkle, did you watch any like YouTube content? Did you know about me, Pro Talks, people like that, or did you just like stop doing all of that? Because you could know about the updates that are coming to RuneScape, but not necessarily watch any content on them, right? Yeah. So I did know. I did know about both of you guys and a couple of other content creators. Um, so during my four and a half year long break, um, I did briefly return a couple of times. Um, I do have uh, a real life friend who plays the game, uh, mostly just to you know hang out and do stuff with him. Um, and also, I played a little bit on an iron, a new Iron Man. I started and did not get very far on, um, but I did get far enough to watch a couple guides and check out some content like Play Around Farm. Okay. That's okay. Fair. And oh. so that actually leads me into like your Iron Man series is probably what inspired me the most to make content on YouTube. Oh, really? Kind I didn't of know that. insane to think because your Rise Son of Iron was such a fun thing to watch. And I watched it while doing a, my own Iron Man at the time. Um, yeah, I probably and... should have named it after a more relevant video game because that uh, title probably doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. <laughs> It, it was it was very very good at, uh, well especially at the time and i i i appreciated the title so if that's anything to go by um but like i think you and alkin were my biggest inspirations to make content on youtube and stuff yeah. so that's pretty cool same here dude <laughs> it's, it's pretty insane to just have you back because of like how much of an inspiration you were and the fact that i can sit down and talk to you and be like the same as you now well not quite the same but like as in like doing the same thing now is uh pretty insane well i really appreciate that um i honestly didn't kind of expect to ever be an inspiration because i i've been i was inspired a lot by you know kind of that um the people we had that came before me um in the 2009 2010 range um but i think that totally makes sense because um it's hard to, you know, be the first out there. And I think a lot of us kind of get inspiration through YouTubers that came before mm -hmm. um, and, you know, draw inspiration from them. Definitely. It's a cycle, I, I think. Cause I've, yeah, I've yeah, had, for sure. I'm, I don't know if you've had people message you re recently, but I've seen people starting a channel because of my content now, which is like, it's like the, it's, it's a father-son thing, dude. It's kind of weird. <laughs> The same time, it's good. Like I, I was also, in... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like people see something and they they they're like, okay, I can I can do this as well. I I feel like doing this. I want to do this, and they you know they they just do it, and uh, it's really cool to see. Like, because you know, honestly, I'm curious, my uncle, is there any specific YouTuber that inspired you? Because uh, for both me and my crew, uh, probably the biggest inspiration was actually your content. Oh, for me, it's got to be Rune Shark, and mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a lot of people can probably relate to that who um, started YouTube around 
you know, the 2011, 2012 range, um, you know, they really were the kind of the face of the RS2 at the time community. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And their channel, like right before the Evolution of Combat came out, that was like their absolute peak. Mm -hmm. And then like, the... God, God Sword from scratch and stuff like that. That stuff yeah. was so fun. Uh, didn't didn't Nave Slayer Holic and a few others also start around that time? I could be wrong. RS Nave like turned into some family friendly Minecraft YouTuber, but uh, uh Yeah, it seemed like there was a big wave of people starting YouTube in like twenty eleven. You know, the couple years year or two preceding the evolution combat coming out. And I'm not really sure why that was. Um it could also be just because that's when I was active in YouTube and aware of it happening. And there's lots of people who started before and after. Um, but it's, I think you're the most active on YouTube and exploring other channels when you're first starting out yourself because you're looking for inspiration and what other people are doing. So that's probably why I'm like most aware of, of that period of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could translate it into market research if you're taking YouTube very seriously. Like looking what works, what doesn't work, without having to to, because YouTube is trial and error basically. I'm sure you've found that out yourself as well with certain videos, which ones people like, which ones people absolutely dislike. Actually, that's a good question. Have you ever had a video that just got bombed? A RuneScape video, not other content like your Dark Souls. I think you did at some point and Fallout, three, four. Yeah, uh, um, those didn't do as poorly as I thought in terms of like likes and dislikes for being on a, a, a RuneScape exclusive channel up to that point. Um, but I, I think there are definitely videos that perform better or worse. Um, in terms of a video that got bombed, um, I mean, I made a video once where it was like a vote and it was like, if you want this, like the video, if you want this, dislike the video. And that one got bombed pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh? That's not uh, something I expected to hear, to be honest. That's an interesting way to do it as well. Cause it impacts the algorithm and things, right? When people are yeah. interacting. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Is it, um, is I, it... I, I... I oh. think I have uploaded a couple of videos that were kind of like a mistake. Like there was some sort of huge audio problem or um, I just like got something wrong in the video. And I think for the most part, I tried to catch those pretty quickly and like delete them and then like fix the issue and then re-upload them. Um, but in terms of just like, if we want to talk about videos that perform better than others, like that's, that's definitely a case. I think both of you guys are probably aware, like making a guide on a major piece of content is going to perform way better than mm -hmm. anything else, yeah. but <laughs> especially like, especially if it's new, if it's new, yeah. it's just people like break their mouse trying to get on the video, dude. It's, <laughs> that's a very extreme way of uh, describing it, but um, that's basically what it is. Or, or, or I don't think you've ever done this. I know um, uh, War Delicious had a hand in doing it. If you if you put Jagex in the title or something, oh, that um, doesn't do well. No, 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 no. It it's does very well. If you if you put Jagex oh, bad, okay. boom, dude, <laughs> people just hop onto it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I think I found your video. Is it the Rune Labs idea? It has a fifty eight percent. Oh yeah, I do remember that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Crap, dude, <laughs> five hundred eighty three likes. 426. I think it's this one where you're like, if you dislike this idea, dislike the video. It's probably that. It I think a lot of people actually disliked that video because they um, were saying like, oh, you're just you just have this idea because you have like a ton of one keystone and you want to transfer them all, um, which was definitely <laughs> true. So, <laughs> oh, I, that, that was definitely part of it. Okay. Oh, interesting, dude. I, I was wondering like, why I had uh, that's a, that's your extreme like to dislike ratio yeah i think part of that video's inspiration was um i i mean the nice way of looking at it is like oh the keystones i think especially at the time had like a massive margin of what keystones were worth more and what keystones were worth less based on ge prices and i was like oh this could be a, a good way to kind of balance that out a little bit if that's even necessary mm -hmm. to do but um also it was because on my iron man i can't remember which keystone it was, but I went super dry on like one or two keystones. Um, are they even called keystones? I don't remember. Yeah, the the yeah. things that the legions, legions drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had I had so many signets of like all the other ones. Um, but of course, on an Iron Man, there's nothing you can do because you can't buy signets. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't play RMM mode. Easy clap, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the only one that doesn't like Iron Man mode here. Or in the entire RuneScape community, for that matter, I think. Like, everyone loves Iron Man. I'm just like, hey, dude, dude you can't buy stuff. Yeah. I, I like buying stuff. It does make everything way harder. <laughs> yes. But uh, that, that idea, um, you know, you, perhaps you got dislikes because people thought you were trying to, trying to change their merching plans or whatever, or you're trying to merch. Because uh, uh, we've had that comment or something like um... that. I'm not sure. I have it 24 7 now. Like, I made one video and now it's just the center of half of the comments. So, like, I made a video yes, look, yesterday or day before about Elite Clues, and, and then I just get a comment, nice Wyvern crossbow merch. So, like, oh, dude, yeah. I, I did I, like this. The video is like a month old now, right? No, it's like two, three months old, man. What? Okay, time fly time's flying, dude. This isn't good. Yeah, it's like it's like two months old or something. But like, yeah, the Wyvern Crossways went up, but I didn't have any and or anything like that. And people just don't seem to believe it because because it can be done. They expect that it does get done, you know. I have no use for money. I give away like ninety percent of the money that I make to my community. So why would I manipulate my community to make more money that I don't need? It makes no sense. Like I mean, <laughs> you you could Robin Hood it, you know, in, in a way. Like oh yeah, I'm, I'm making money off of my viewers, but I'm giving it back. Kick W, dude. <laughs> now, yeah, but, but Robin Hood sold true. for the rich and gave to the poor. I'd be stealing from the poor, giving to the poor. Oh, I mean, at because... least it's like a like a like a uh, a non waste cycle. I, I, I'm kidding. Sure. Obviously, it's not good, <laughs> but. I think you just called all of your viewers poor. Well, nah, Ooh. nah, like, um, so the people who would be buying it's the like... Wyvern crossbow are people who couldn't afford ascensions. So they would be yeah, yeah, good some point. of the poorer people. Well, Relatively yeah, poor. Yeah. I was going to say, what's another word for not being able to afford something? It's four letters. P-O-U-R? Uh, oh. oh. Pure. Wow. <laughs> that, well done. <laughs> what, about being, what about being an Iron Man? If you just main an Iron Man account and don't play anything else, then you can you can't be accused for price manipulation because why True. would it help you out anyway? I mean, you I, have I play like five Iron Man. Man. I don't have five. You have <laughs> like an your... ultimate one. You have a you have a hardcore. you have your your regular. No wait, I only have, have the one? hardcore and the no bank, but I don't play the no bank anymore. Wait, didn't you have more? I swear yeah, you've I've done played like... some for like random challenges yeah, yeah. or something, but yeah, just no. just my hardcore that's maxed and my um no bank account which got very very annoying because i had to continuously make my own rules up and stuff and yikes and kind of sucked in that regards because i felt like i was like doing correct choices <laughs> but there'd always be people that disagree and it would cause a lot of issues in that regards and then mm -hmm. also it's just such a crazy thing it's easy to get burnt out playing it yep so speaking of iron man right i i i, I, I... rise son of iron uh, episode 42 when <laughs> exactly, dude. When you get back on the Iron Man, you have these cards. Right? One, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's 42 or it's 40. I'm gonna, yeah, you know, I'll just check for you. It was in the 40s. Yeah, I can't remember that. Um, 41 is the last one. There we go. So here's the thing. Um, I have cleared out my bank on my Iron Man. Um, huh? For the purpose of paying for bonds. bonds. No, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You you drop like I don't know your 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 weapons your your supplies to sell yeah. your main and then the knock oh, staff all of the drops no, all of the tradable supplies that rebuild that one is, yeah even more reason to play the the Iron Man because then it's Rise from Son Sprite. of Iron version two point from the dead and then the actual Rise yeah yeah we'll see we'll see I I I don't know if I have a whole lot of inspiration to play Iron Man mode at the moment um there's... could totally see it happening in the future though i mean there, there's a lot of things i don't miss about iron man there are a lot of things that i do miss about iron man but at the same time like you want to do something that you're definitely going to enjoy coming back you don't want to burn yourself out instantly so if iron man's going to burn you out then yeah stick to your main and have fun with that and just just enjoy the game for what it is you know yeah exactly because burnout's a real thing um especially yeah it my attempts to play old school the past couple of years and maybe maybe not having a youtube channel to maintain is a big part of it but i just found it's really really easy to burn out especially when you're doing grindy stuff which you have to do a lot on iron man yeah definitely there's a lot of things that i've like 
neglected on my Iron Man and such, but just because like it's just not fun content to watch and stuff, and you have to do like two hundred hours of grinding for like a three four minute part of a video, and it's just it, it does get crazy. The the thing is though, uh, like mid to high level. Uh, Iron Man content is the best content. I, I honestly, I find early game Iron Man content to watch extremely boring. It's, it's like just quests and grinding. Yeah, exactly. Skills, right? Yeah, that's and I think where Monko ended off was pretty high end. I, I I'm gonna have to just like a, a friend uh, as well who who pretty much dropped off after he got like 96 summoning and all that stuff. After like it was just grinding levels, he just stopped the series. Yeah, I had so I think the problem with Iron Man is my goal had been finish Nox weapon for so long, and I really wanted either a Nox scythe or bow. Um, and I finished a Nox weapon; it was the staff, so not quite exactly what I was going for. But like, I had a tier ninety weapon, and you'd think like, oh, this unlocks so much content. You know, there's so much. I can't remember if Telos was out in the game or not, but. Um, you know, so a, a great way to kill a lot of bosses with, you know, kill speeds that were previously unattainable. Um, but the hard part is like when your goal is finish that tier 90 for so long and then you finish it, it just, there's kind of like this void, this like empty feeling of like, I've done it. Like I need a new goal now and I don't have one. Mm -hmm. That's very relatable. And like any goal RuneScape wise, if it's a big goal, that, that, that just makes perfect sense, really. It just does. And the sense of feeling lost after completing. Yeah, maxing, getting a 290 weapon, getting X amount of money, getting this 120, that 120, yeah. remaxing, whatever it may be. Trim. Uh, what, what's that noise? You don't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that's an attainable goal for most of us. No. I mean, uh, trim is uh, a little too much. It's just, I don't know. It just. It seems like so many pointless things. Like, why do you have to kill four thousand chompy birds? Yeah, like because because you you need to be a slaughterhouse in action. Yeah, game. it's just I you don't know what's like. Reason. At least they took away the castle wars requirement for trim. That makes it way more obtainable for a lot of players. To be fair, can you just do like any mini game now with the uh, um, spotlight? Uh, no, so or they you just you, don't have to do mini games. Yeah, so what people used to do is they would use Thaler on it or they would just AFK Castle Wars on Spotlight and get the Castle Wars tokens and Thaler. Um, and then they'd okay. just be dating Castle Wars for 20 minutes every time and, and carry on. But yeah, they completely removed Castle Wars now from Trim. Hell yeah. I imagine a lot of people who did that were pretty upset. Yeah, but then they got the, a Halo that they all complained about as well because it wasn't nice enough or whatever. So, you know, it, it swings around about. Mm -hmm. So... Munkle, um, you have not tried Elite Dungeons whatsoever, right? Nothing. Yeah, not yet. Uh, Talos, Solak, AOD, maybe? So Talos, I think, might have been in the game. Did he come out with the release of, of no, um, Star Wars Dungeon 2? No. Or yes. was that later? No, wait. It was he like three... Not. It wasn't 2016 though, right? Yeah, it correct? was after the release of the others. So you played and tested out those bosses, but I don't think uh, no, 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 no. Telos was out when you done no. your. Okay, guys so Telos. The only point where I've played RS where Telos was in the game, I was working on a low level Iron Man. So, and I don't remember Solak coming out. Um, so he's new for me as well. Oh, hmm. My crew, you wanna group PVM with Michael sometime? <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> if but, he is, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm, I already offered him like elite dungeons or any other boss. Because I'm not sure if he wants to get the Reaper title, but uh, if he does have some help from people who are experienced, that might be uh, a good idea. Could make for some pretty fun content as well, like collaboration. Exactly. Yeah, I'm totally down. It's mostly just a, a schedule thing. Um, yep. Yeah, the hard part is the the best time I have to play RS right now is when I have class or homework. So uh, <laughs> it's difficult to do that and PVM at the same time. Mm. I'm doing my best, though. Yeah, definitely. I know what you mean. Yeah, like only if you have time in between, it's a, it's a possibility. Otherwise, if getting RuneScape while doing classes it might not be the best idea, but that's that's pretty easy to do. Just like, I don't know, archaeology, for example. Not oh, sure yeah. what your level is now. 
I'm uh, closing in on 70, but I, I found archaeology like you can still you can still pick up most of what is being said in lecture and do archaeology just fine. Yeah, especially if you have all uh, one. How how fun is archaeology in your opinion? One to ten, and because after sixty or so, the new the the, the freshness. Uh, you're in Everlight District, right? And it's like Forever 60, 60 to seventies. Like, I, I almost, idea. I almost just gave up. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely loved getting up to I don't know fifty, fifty five. Um, and then it did get really grindy, and I've kind of slowed down. But it's helped because, um, you know, getting an archaeology daily every day if you're maxed in every other skill that helps because it's a decent amount of XP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I was sending the missions for a while. I've kind of stopped doing that. Um, and that was helping out quite a bit. So I wasn't just purely grinding out, you know, loads and loads of damaged artifacts and repairing them because that that does take forever. Um, but I think it's I'm comparing it to the release of other skills like divination when that came out, um, <laughs> especially, you know, pre Gethixian caches. Yeah. Um, that one was really painful because <laughs> it was it was slow, like archaeology. I think archaeology is actually slower, at least up to this point. It, it but is. divination was really slow, but it was just doing the same thing, you know, for yeah. 10 straight levels. And then you move and you just do the exact same thing in a different location. Um, but archaeology, I think the mysteries have been awesome. I think the whole like collector's log of like find this many artifacts of, you know, from all of these piles and all these different regions that's been awesome so mm. there's just like there's all this extra mm. content and like little unlockables well. that you don't normally get with a skill that um just help you push through the grind plus like 50 to 70 is the worst part of archaeology i always say uh 1 to 50 is nice and fun 50 to 70 is horrible because it's you're stuck in forever light and there's not much change in and it's so slow 70 to 90 it gets a lot better 90 to 99 it's really good and then 99 to 120 is insane like it's just absolutely insane yeah a lot of people in my friends chat who have been talking about um like their grind to 120 archaeology have you know for the most part really enjoyed it so it must get better as a skill yeah and it gets a lot faster that's the big thing as well after 99 you mean right because because i i honestly found uh, the Night last level quite slow fine. Uh, 90 to 99 if you're using boost and stuff, it's like 250k an hour, it's pretty good. I was AFK really hard, maybe that's what I was like working out <laughs> on my phone, mobile yeah. by the way, and like just, yeah, okay, just if you're hard. AFK and, and not following times right and stuff, that no. affects yeah. uh, XP rates a lot. But well, yeah, if you're 90... super AFK, who cares what the XP rate is? That's yeah, kind of my well... main philosophy is I'll, I'll always choose the super AFK thing, even if it's slower, um, because then I... I can, you know, play another game on the side. I can watch a movie. I can do whatever. Same, because uh, I, I don't know, man. Like skilling, you, if, once you've maxed your account, you kind of, you kind of don't really want to do like a full ninety nine anymore, especially one as slow as like archaeology. Yeah, who does that? Well, yeah, like it's kind of, you know, like for for content creation, it's so good. It's new skill, big, big, big content, lots of depth, lots of things to cover, but um. In terms of actual training, you, you kind of want to get to 99 or 120 in your case, or actually 200 mil in your case, my crew, as fast <laughs> as possible to get back to normal. I just wanted to get the rank. But you did? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, close enough. You wanted, well, I, want, I, wanted top, no, I wanted top 25, so I don't know oh. a lot better than I thought I would. I nice. thought you wanted to go for like number one, like be. Uh, That's what everyone thought. That's what everyone thought. And then everyone was like, you let me down losing to me. I was like, Mate, my, my goal, which I have always said in every single video leading up to archaeology, was top 25, and I got fourth. I'm more than, like, uh, happy with that. that is, it's insane. I just wanted front page. No hard feelings against uh, Omid and Lamy? Oh, no, they've done... Like, Omid was probably the best out of everyone because he didn't have a Tony Smatic, and he managed to get uh, third place uh, half an hour behind Lee and half an hour in front of me. So me, Lee, and Omid were literally an hour apart for second, wow. third, and fourth. Um, kinda... But Omid like stayed up for like seventy-two hours and went absolutely ham and became the Tony 70... Matic. So that's uh, that's almost like a death switch, a mm. wish in terms of gaming, right? I don't know how long you did, but uh, uh, that's that's really long. It's insane, yeah. I don't know. Did he like? Did he like walk around in between? I'm not sure. Yeah, you, I, I, I guess so. I guess he probably did. And like, 
uh, taking breaks here and there was obviously helpful. Helpful. I did the same, but I was only doing like I say only. I was doing like <laughs> twenty to twenty-two hour days. Filthy um, casual, dude. Twenty-two. Yeah. So, like, so the fact that he got a seventy-two is just. Bad. He <laughs> did say he passed out halfway through, and his brother woke him up once he'd been what? napping for like forty minutes because he what? got his brother to wake wake him up if he ever fell asleep. Because that's XP waste. Yeah, exactly. I mean, literally was. Oh, yeah, but so Jesus. he became the Tony's Matuk, and it didn't matter that he didn't have the uh, hero item. He was the hero item kind of thing. That's why I was the most impressed with Omid out of everyone. Lemmy had the Tony's Matuk like for four days before the second place, which was Lee. Um, so Lee got his Tony Matuk about four days after Lemmy. Uh, I got mine about half a day after Lee. Uh, then Ken got his like half a day after me. And then we were like in the order pretty much. So it showed how much the Tony's Matic did help. Um, but obviously we thought there was going to be more coming into the game. So we were a bit more relaxed about it. Um, but there was there was a four day period between the second and the third Matic, which made it wow. very, very difficult. But okay. uh, yeah, Omid didn't even have a Matic and he came third, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Hey, and that doesn't do. take anything away from like Lemie and stuff. He still put in his like 20 to 22 hour days as well and still efficient <laughs> and everything, right? He's still done insane. But yeah, Omid, <laughs> MVP. I guess that could lead into the question like, what's the longest session you've had on RuneScape, Munkle? Oh, the longest, like without getting up and taking a break or just. Yeah, yeah. Or like oh. maybe like the longest, like the longest day with breaks counted in. I've done some 12, 14 hour days. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever gone longer than that, mostly just because um, not that I wouldn't be willing to like pull an all nighter for an insane grind. I just, my body won't let me. <laughs> I have a very hard time staying awake, um, you know, past uh, 11 p.m. or midnight. Hey, same. Same, dude. Sleep is I good. can pretty much only I can pretty much only do it if it's like a so social situation or like a party or I'm out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of same. True. Plus, you want to maintain your routine for everything that you're doing, so it makes sense. Yeah, I'd rather like just not sleep very much and get up early, um, as opposed to like staying up for forty eight hours or some insane amount of time. Also, same. Okay. So, so basically, you're the only content creator, only RuneScape player I have seen with uh, with a normal sleep schedule. Really, I didn't know that was uncommon. No, no, dude, I swear. Every Mike, Mike, where you have a you have a weird. You're like <laughs> streaming, like God. It's because of you. Because how many people do you know of a, like a bad sleep schedule, Mike? Uh, a decent amount. Yeah, see, see that like pretty much anyone I talk to is like. Pulling all nighters or like playing RuneScape at three AM, dude. I I don't understand. <laughs> I, I I can't comprehend why. I think it's just gamers in general, not just like RuneScape specifically. I think people who play games typically play them at, at silly hours or or to a crazy degree, especially if they have time off of work or time off of school. What if for work you have to get up at like I don't know six AM, maybe seven, depending on where you're. At. Yeah, it depends on the job, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But still, like, yeah, I used to work mornings, and I would work seven to noon. Um, now I do class in the mornings, which is really, really nice because you still have to get up early, but at least you don't have to like get ready for your day or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I work noon to four now, which is really nice. Nice. You can you can but just it's... vibe your chair for school. Yeah. <laughs> It's For it's now, hard to have a weird sleep schedule if you have like a normal work school schedule. I mean, unless you're okay just being really sleep deprived or taking naps during the day or something. But <laughs> I I found it's like if you're doing class from like eight a.m. to whatever, and then you're working until four or five p.m. It's it's really really hard to have a weird sleep schedule if you have that kind of life schedule. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Unless Micro wants to uh, mention anything about the topic, uh, I wanna. Uh... I I I'm a full time nerd that doesn't sleep at normal times. I don't. Un yeah. <clears throat> well, then it doesn't matter. Like if you're just making <laughs> videos, like it, well, it doesn't matter if you're doing it at three a.m. Unless you live with people, I guess you know. But yeah, I guess you can just set your own schedule. Yeah, I just I, I make sure I'm there for the street. 
yeah, exactly. I just need to make sure I'm like there to stream on time, which I am, but I stream in the evenings anyway. And like, I do sometimes sleep at ungodly hours, but if I'm grinding something for a stream or a video, it, it doesn't really matter when I sleep, it, just as long as I get the sleep kind of thing. Um, but I used to work in education and stuff, and I used to get up at like 7 a.m. and stuff in the morning. It's not like I can't do it it's just sometimes it's easier to just grind out the rest of this thing until like 3 a.m and then sleep rather than wake up and grind it in the morning because i'm like in the zone or whatever i'll just do it but yeah that... oh i, I, I saw Marco yeah. mute himself so i was like i'll, I'll uh, <laughs> hold myself sorry i just muted myself to cough i didn't have anything to say yeah that 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 <laughs> uh, okay but yeah michael you you you're mostly like you just just plan like your your day around streaming, right? And that's and then the videos you just see whenever you can make it. Like yeah, yeah, the videos are difficult now with the amount of streaming I do. So like I definitely upload less than I used to. I do like two videos a week. I used to do like four videos a week, but two videos a week is still a decent amount and still hopefully a nice amount of content for people to tune into. But it's one of those things where I take two days off a week to make videos and they're the two videos that I get out kind of thing because I can't really edit, stream, do real life stuff, uh, you know, if anything with family, friends and all of that. Like it's impossible mm -hmm. to balance everything. I know a lot of people that, you know, either quit streaming and focus all on YouTube or quit YouTube and focus all on streaming because it's just such a crazy grind. I know like you didn't didn't enjoy streaming tons and you wanted to focus more on YouTube so you stopped yep. that. Yep. Then the RS guy's the opposite. He stopped YouTube because he wanted to focus on streaming. So it is difficult, and a lot of people that do like the really big uploads all the time while streaming are like they have like their own editors and things, right? Do you want to do a shout or like uh, anyone in the chat or like you know what I mean? What do you looking mean? Looking for uh... Uh, no, so like I have a friend <laughs> who has edited a couple of videos for me. Uh, his he's Zowski. He's probably known to a decent amount of people, um, but he edited a couple of the videos together, like the deal or no deal and stuff like that that I've done on stream. But the thing with me is that I can't just hire an editor because an editor's not going to make guides, you know? Like, yeah, it's kind of weird. You can't, <laughs> I'm sure Mongol can relate as well. Like, how how would you let someone else edit a guide for you? Because for the guide, you like make it step by. Step. It's kind of yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's like impossible. So I have like some stream related stuff that someone will edit for me. So like, I have like 800 videos on my channel, and only five of them were not edited by me. So it it, it puts it into perspective, like how it's like near enough impossible to do on a lot of things, but mm -hmm. that's why I take the two days off streaming to get the two videos out. And then I stick to that and it's normally okay. I think it's really hard to hire an editor for, um, and I know like filmmakers, uh, people who make shows do this all the time. <laughs> so there's gotta be a way, but I think it's really hard to have an editor for something like a guide because um, you have to put a lot of creative direction into it. Um, mm -hmm. because you know what you want the guide to look like, like, you know, the format, you know, the important points to cover and focus on, but like, they don't know that. So it's almost, it almost feels like it would take so much time just kind of explaining what you need to do. You might as well just do it yourself. Oh yeah, for sure. Exactly. The, the only way it could work is if you're like one of those big boy streamers that own, I don't know, Pokimane, that Hearthstone guy, uh, Toast, <laughs> toast disguise toast disguise toast you know just yeet out highlights basically what wazzy does but then let someone else do it for you yeah so highlights work very well and they're the ones that have been edited for me my deal or no deal is my who wants to be a billionaire we will miss it like those type of videos that were just ripped from stream i've had other people edit which was super helpful mm -hmm. but like i can't do that with guides right so if i was someone that done like variety content or whatever it'd be a, i guess easier because you don't do guides on that you just like show gameplay and mm -hmm. then they can rip it from stream and put it together that's why people like the the pokemon and and disguised toast and stuff who get like daily videos out it's just because they take it from their daily stream you know yeah yeah and honestly exactly. hearthstone is is like the perfect game for that i i personally play a lot of hearthstone it's but it's like it's been my go-to game if i'm doing something afk on runescape for forever <laughs> for as long as hearthstone's been out um but that game is just like so perfect for highlights um because that's 
you know, that's what you're doing is you're playing mm -hmm. the game. And then most people that upload Hearthstone content, it's just them playing on stream. But um, I think RuneScape, because of the fact that you can make guides, is just like not nearly as well suited for that. So it just really depends on the game. Also, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. You know, the, a game I can think of that's like really bad for highlights probably like a like a single player game okay maybe not but like a game where you should care about the story and the person playing it it's, it's like really bad if you like cut parts out yeah but then they can do like let's plays and get like 10 episodes out of it from like free streams yeah probably... dude like yeet just full blown <laughs> uh <clears throat> i know a couple of big youtubers that do that so that, that's how it works dude what what <laughs> is it um what imagine smart not hard or whatever it is I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. It's you know more power to them, dude. Imagine if you could literally RuneScape Let's Plays, right? I know there's one YouTube that yeets out like three hour episodes, uncut, basically. Uh, that no one would watch. Uh, like uh, on a large scale, like imagine just looking at someone's progress uh, series, uh, OSRS series, right? Like every mm -hmm. every bit of content without anything cut out, like a let's play. Oh man, <laughs> I, I can't imagine watching that. Even R S three, dude. Like just <sighs> the amount of uh, videos I've done on content like progression, where it's like a hundred hours in in like a ten minute video. <laughs> imagine that not cut down, just you AFK mining. Like hello. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> well, it just doesn't I work. I think there used it. to be there used to be like more of a space for that, um, but now because. Um, well, I think A, there's like so much more content out there and B, like there's podcasts now. And usually if someone is just wanting to like throw something on in the background, um, I think four or five years ago, like those longer videos where it was just mostly a lot of talking, not really a whole lot going on. There was like more room to actually do that. But now there's so many podcasts to listen to. Like I don't, and those have such, um, <clears throat> higher quality of editing and stuff like i don't know how you compete with that just by like you know playing runescape or something and talking about it yeah for sure for sure like i think it's really that that's actually a good point right i actually wanted to talk about that as well like so so the the best quality guides um five to, to ten years ago right runescape are like so different to what they would be now uh, in general actually every gaming niche uh, the the just the, the the quality of videos has gone up so much. Like if you just if you upload a, a RuneScape guide with unregistered IPcam two right and you're typing on Notepad, uh, it won't work. It just simply you you probably won't even be able to get any views at all. It's kind of crazy how how things have shifted in terms of quality. That you know it's it's called a like an order qualifier. Is, is that like the term? Um, I'm not sure if you guys are like familiar with that term it's it's a business yeah, term but like i'm familiar with the concept so yeah the, the to, to even like compete in certain uh, gaming ni video niche markets or markets uh categories or ni niches is um is so so different to what it used to be yeah and especially because a lot of the people who make videos on games and stuff are people that have editors like we said about so they just focus on creating funny moments and good things towards in the game and then they let their editor go and put in loads of good memes and loads of fancy editing and all of that and they can focus on just you know making the content when as their editor focuses just on editing it it makes it so the quality is just insane on some stuff like the like swampletics is like the perfect example right he doesn't edit his videos he does some of the editing, but he doesn't always do all of it. For example, on his like 512 hour grind in Temple Trekking, where mm -hmm. I had him going through Temple Trekking in the cinematic and fighting stuff with all the flashy stuff. Yep. That was Little Smokey that edited that for him. Oh, no wonder so it all looks so similar, yeah. dude. So Little oh. Smokey is absolutely insane at editing. So you had all of the grind that he done and he put in all of that effort. But then he had someone else also putting in a ton of effort with the editing, and then it just makes a masterpiece at the end, you know? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's basically uh, splitting up just, just tasks, and, you know, you're the best person at this does that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. That's actually the dream if you're a streamer, probably. Yeah, right? definitely. <laughs> you should make an ad on your YouTube channel looking for editors, dude. 
But you then what are they going to edit? Uh, the, just uh, the, uh, you know, the clues maybe. But like, I, I I don't know, man. Like, it's just impossible to have an editor for half of the RuneScape stuff. Yeah, because it just, if it would it kind of lose the micro touch kind of thing, you know? Not even just that. It's just like, I don't really know how someone would make sound like what I do because. You could only trust someone with experience as well. Yeah, but like, like what Monkle said, right? Where if you're making a guide, you have your vision for it and stuff. Yeah, they might do the guides and it might be cool, but yeah, it's not going to be your guide. Oh, anymore, yeah. It, yeah, right? yeah. It's yeah. going to be their, yeah, for... the editor's guide. Why don't they make a channel, you know? It's... Yeah, good point. Yeah, for RuneScape, it might not. No, no, never mind. I, 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 th- <clears throat> I think for editors, it really matters whether your channel is a personality channel or like a content channel. Because if it's a personality, and that's why people are sub to you, is to see you talk and hear your hear your views on things, then you can have an editor. Because like, why does it really matter what the background footage is? But um, if it's a content channel, then if you hire an editor, the content is going to look very different than if you were creating your own and had your own personal touch on it. So um, I think RuneScape is probably a game that trends much more towards content than personality. Um, Although, you know, when it comes to streaming, that's probably more of a personality thing. Mm, I can agree with that, yeah. Mm. For sure, for sure. So, um, Monkle, uh, what is your opinion on MTX? <laughs> Microsoft Actions, Charge Hunter, Yak Track, that kind of thing. Because recently, yeah, it's been in the, in the, in the talks. Well, I know it's been a controversy since, uh, you know, since <laughs> Wheel of Fortune and since the yep. very early days when it first came out. Um, I think it's a difficult question to answer. I'm, I tend to be anti MTX. Like, I, I don't personally want to use them. I would rather unlock something myself than getting a free thing. Um, I think mm-hmm. over time, though, because initially I was very against Wheel of Fortune. You know, like this is ruining the game. Um, but I think over time I've mellowed a little bit just because like that's the industry now. Like it's very difficult to find any game without MTX. And I think um I've kind of decided like there's a way it can be done right. Um because a lot of games are free to play and completely support themselves on cosmetics. And I think that's awesome. If you can deliver a game that's that's quality and people enjoy it, and the only monetiz- monetization it has is like, you know, you can buy a suit and look different in game. I think if you can, yeah, if you can sustain that, that's amazing. But the problem with RS3 is it goes beyond that, right? Like you can buy XP and and uh, and items and stuff. Um, and I think that's kind of where it crosses a line and it's too much. Um, it doesn't bother you if you play RS enough, I feel like, because you just get used to it. But um, I agree, it's probably like a huge turnoff for a lot of people looking at the game and being like, oh, you can just buy all your levels. But the thing is, it's so expensive, though. Like, uh, yeah, that's the only totally argument. I'm not, I'm not like not against NTX, but I'm not like against it. Like, like big time or anything. It's because it's so expensive. I think yeah, I'm, big, not, I'm not like up in arms against it anymore. But um, I, I think like MTX that affects your in-game progress is probably. Um, a bridge too far in terms of like me being willing to support it. I'm, I'm more like, yes, cosmetics, cosmetics are awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, if a game company can supplement themselves or even make all of their income off of that, that's that's amazing. But um, when it comes to in-game MTX, I personally am not really a huge fan. Okay. So for me personally, obviously MTX is not great, but I think it's to the point where it's too late even if they were to completely remove it because the damage is done kind of thing i feel like they're getting some promos yeah. that are way too overpowered which sucks obviously and the power creep is the bad part of it i think they should like uh, calm down with some of it for sure and it doesn't have to just always get better for it to be sold because people are going to buy it regardless mm-hmm. um and cosmetics are some of the best things in mtx that sell like the zombie walk and the you know, assassin walk and everything like that. They just need to do more events like that, in my opinion. So they should just dole down the XP side and up the cosmetic side a little bit, like what we were talking about. But at the same time, MTX doesn't really affect the people that really, really, really care about XP. 
because whenever a new skill is released, it can't be MTX for six months. So the archaeology race that I was part of, no one was able to get an upper hand for any type of microtransactions. Nothing that could be obtained via microtransactions worked on the skill. So yes, MTX bad. Yes, MTX re not good. But at the same <laughs> time, like the people that really, really care about XP are not going to be at all worried by it because... Yeah, it's easier to get XP now than maybe when I'd done it back in the day or whoever done it back in the day. But when it actually matters, MTX won't be part of it, you know? Yeah, I agree. And also, I think that um, it depends on your style of play, whether you play RS competitively or more for personal achievement. Mm -hmm. um, because if you play it for personal achievement, then you just don't buy MTX. You could even ignore Treasure Hunter completely if you want to. Um, and just finish all of your goals yourself, and then it shouldn't really matter whether MTX are in the game or not. I mean, I think I trend more towards that play style, but yeah. for people who are competitive, like I also understand why it has been upsetting in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about the Yak track then? Which is mostly like it's com cosmetic, but it's like a really, really nasty grind kind of thing. I don't know enough about Yak Track to really this, comment on that. Because okay, because uh, the Yak Track is like uh, so we're talking about like uh, competitive players, casual players, kind of thing. The Yak Track is for both. Because um, even like if if you spend money, you don't get an advantage. You only get like the cosmetics uh, fast. It's like a um, Fortnite. What is it? Pass. Battle pass. Yeah, that kind of thing. Which is mm -hmm. like in Call of Duty, they have it. They have it in RuneScape now. They have it in. They have their Wall of Tanks. They have it in a bunch of games. So wait, is are you talking like about Battle Pass? Like, give us money now for stuff that may or may not come out in the future. No, no, no. Like, uh, like you have different levels you can get by grinding, or you can just pay to skip the levels. Or you have okay. a you have a buy. RuneScape had Rune Pass twice, where One, it is. I think. Oh, where well, you you did pay beforehand, and you just get more rewards if you got the premium version by grinding through. I think. Don't remember exactly how it worked, but yeah. So I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I, that's I, probably more along the lines of like acceptable MTX because it's mostly cosmetic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I wanna I wanna ask uh, you both about this question. Actually, uh, this is a very important one. So I'm sure Monkle Zonky, uh, you know what the PVM app is. I've seen you in there. Um, what yeah, are your thoughts on the PVM? So far. <laughs> okay, that, <laughs> well, that was quick. Guess, Boom. <laughs> I guess that answers the question. Um, I I think it's awesome. Um, and I will say, so when I first came back to RS3, the first, I I don't even want to say a week, first few days, I wasn't aware of the PVM hub, um, <laughs> and <laughs> how how convenient it is. Um, and I was really really missing like the houses in old school because it feels like it unlocks so much in terms of just like how you get around the game um because if you fully upgrade your house in old school you can you, you know you tell you to your house you restore your stats you can do anything you can go anywhere it makes everything incredibly convenient um and i was like oh runescape 3 doesn't have something like this um so i feel like without the pvm hub it's it's uh it's something like you don't know you miss until it's gone um but I also totally see how like it devalues you know the max guild because previously that was the way you have a teleport to a bank and restore your stats and go to any boss and mm -hmm. um, and now everyone has access to that. But I I think overall it's more good than bad because it gets more people PVMing and more people experiencing like the best content this game has to offer. Yeah, yeah actually, I didn't... oh go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was just gonna say lock him. You know, PVM content behind getting 99 all skills and stuff, like with the portals and everything in the Max Guild, was just kind of silly. It's like the reason why comp rework was changed, right? Because looking behind the best in slot K to achievements that are to do with player owned farms, of course, the PVM is going to be annoyed when they have to go do player owned farms to get their best in slot PVM cape. So they've separated that, they've made the PVM hub so people can focus on what they want to do in the game so they don't have to focus on things that they can't be bothered to do and burn themselves out doing those just to try and unlock something that benefits them in another area. And I think they've done that really, really well and they need to continue doing that because RuneScape is all about doing what you want to do and it's like sandbox, you can choose your journey. 
But then if you're forced to do this to make that optimal, it's kind of sucky, right? Yeah, yeah I, I love the idea of that personally. Um, I can't think of a whole lot of of games that force you to play content that you may not enjoy doing in order to unlock stuff. I mean, RuneScape has been one of them, obviously. But um, yeah, I'm I'm a huge proponent of just allowing the player to do what they want to do and not forcing them to into these grinds that they may not enjoy because like burnout is the main reason why anyone quits rs and that's how you get burnout is by forcing yourself into a grind that you don't want to do or daily escape it's kind of like or, it's not really grind, but kind of. dailies are brutal for for burning now i'm i'm trying to like limit the amount of dailies i do just to avoid that good dude please please stick to that because uh otherwise we'll have a have another four year break before you come back as a joke, by the way, I, I yeah. don't. I, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the dailies. Um. I mean, what is your full opinion on dailies? Because I, I think dailies. Uh, they they give the player that wants to, uh, you know, do them every day a chance to get through content quicker, right? But, um, it also like, puts people in that rhythm, rhythm of like having to do them because if you don't you're like not efficient and i know uh you Munkle, as as one of the few players don't necessarily care that much about efficiency right you just said it as well like afk i prefer that kind of thing and uh yeah like I'm, I'm kind of like that way as well i prefer to just do something casually and not get burnt out and not worry as much um well my group for example with the archaeology race was the exact opposite you know trying to get <laughs> as, <laughs> as far as far as he could uh, within a certain period of time so yeah what, what's your, your like full opinion on dailies i mean it's it's tough because i think a lot of them are cool um i've been a fan of like monthly activities um i think those are great because there's a lot more time flexibility and when you can do them because you have a whole 30 days um but i don't really love the idea of weeklies or dailies um for xp it's kind of nice to have things like potion flask because like it's a really quick thing you do you augment your your cash stack um if you're good on money you totally don't have to do it it's not like you're missing out on this super efficient thing but when it came to maxing i think that the xp related dailies or weeklies um are just really hard because it feels like you're missing out on this like massive thing if you don't go out of your way to do it but you really don't want to go out of your way to do it because you just want to focus on your 99 grind or you want to focus on your um you know your boss kills or whatever it is um i think the hardest one for me personally was gathixian caches um and i got 99 divination on my main i i don't remember if i got them before it came out or like recently after but i didn't really worry about doing them on my main but on my iron man it's like oh i have to do gathixian caches i have to go do this activity i really don't want to do and I find is really boring. And it's, you have to like take this 10 minute segment out of your regularly scheduled day um, oh, to yeah. go do this activity. And it was just, it was awful. Um, but it feels like you're missing out on so much XP. If you don't do it, it feels like you have to. That's, 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 yeah. that's kind of like toxic game design, right? Cause they, they know you're going to max. There's they... a lot of games like that though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's not like RuneScape is is, is bad because they they're the only ones that do it. No, no way. <laughs> but like, I I I totally agree with the maxing part. Like, I think many players can relate that when they are like going for max or they're doing something on the Iron Man that could be done faster with dailies, they really feel that like force to do it because otherwise they'd you know be doing the same thing but just uh, like I don't know divination like doing divination for like four times as long. Like that's hella boring. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of, yeah. I think, so I think um, the better way to balance it, and I, I, I'm not, this is completely a personal preference thing, but I like the idea of mini games or activities as opposed to regular training methods instead of like this daily thing that you have to do at a regular schedule, regularly scheduled time. Or if you do have a daily, have it be something you can do like at any point. Um, I think just oh, yeah. like the time aspect of like, okay, I'm I'm standing on a bank, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that exact moment to teleport mm -hmm. and do this thing, and I can only do it at this time, so I can't miss it. Um, that's what really adds a lot of stress 
stress I and pressure agree. on a daily that's day. actually such a good point that's that's literally like the best way anyone could like balance it out just just because if you can do it instantly it's going to take away from that waiting time which uh arguably makes dailies like a longer take 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 like a longer chunk out of your day right that's huh. what's so nice about Vizwax and stuff because you can just go do it and it takes five whenever minutes you and you yep. do it whenever um, I, so, I completely agree with that. They did it for divination a little bit because caches were every three hours. I don't know whether you knew that, Protox, but when what caches, I didn't do divination, but caches like... when they were originally released for the first like year, maybe even two years, they were every three hours. So, yeah, I remember that. yeah, so like they would only open up once every three hours rather than once an hour on the hour. It was once every three hours on the hour, and you had to keep track of that. And man. That was so much effort doing div caches every single day. So they've made it a bit better over time with it. different stuff. Yikes. But uh, what do you mean they nerfed it? They nerfed the XP, right? No, no. XP is the same. Wait, what did they end up nerfing then? Kinda... They were talking about nerfing caches, but they, they didn't. They they haven't? Wait. No, no caches. I've, I've been lied to. Wait, what? Caches okay. are still the same. Never mind. Uh, caches are brain... still the same. Oh yeah. Well, actually, no. Hall of Memories is. I mean, yeah, yeah. They're still good, but um, you do caches still seventy, and then you can either continue caches or do Hall of Memories. That's pretty much okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Hall of Memories is, is pog. It's not as good as like it's it's only like super super good if you two take of whatever it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it, it, yeah, it's still good without. But it's like it's it's just faster than regular training. It's not like it's insane if you like uh, AFK for example, or, like do the core thing and mm -hmm. just. Or it's just that I, I find everything that's slower than 300k per hour, I, I just don't find it insane. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's bad. Bad game. <laughs> so I, re... <laughs> I will say with Divination specifically, um, and also with other skills, like one of my favorite things in this game for an alternative training method is like a it. temporary thing that you can do um, and you, you have a limited amount of XP that you can gain. So I'm, I'm mostly thinking of, like, the Madra memories with the Divination and, like, the Empty Throne Room for, like, agility and mining. And for, like, this very brief period of time, it's, like, the best XP rate you can get. But you can only do it for so long, so it feels a little bit exclusive, but you can go do it whenever. And it's just, like, this nice little break from training that you can just go do at any point at your leisure. Um, and it's, it's good XP. It's worth doing. Um, but then like at the end you like complete it and it's done and it's almost like this side quest that you did in your training and i kind of wish the game had more of that yeah they're good things for sure huh. but by the way for, for the viewers wondering like every time uh, that you had to mute yourself just uh, a second ago right because um i heard it like a cough coming up like don't worry just you can just stop in between if you uh, don't want to talk then um uncle so like okay I love I love your like dedication to complete like your your <laughs> what you were trying to say like your voice keeps getting uh you like feel it charging up kind of thing. <laughs> the man's recovering from Rona a little bit. Yep. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, before someone in comments says, hey, "What's this? Why is this sounding so weird here? What what's going on?" But even though we uh, at the start, you know, it was mentioned, but yeah, yeah, um, like cough hangs on. I I've heard that you know it, it can be a month long, so a couple wow. of months process wow. uh, and that's not for everyone um i think everyone's symptoms are are super different <laughs> and that's why it's kind of hard to like know what to expect but um yeah for a lot of people the cough can hang on for a long time damn okay so if you you were talking about like you you like mini games and like other things in regular training more right but how do you feel about mini games being fairly dead mostly i'm not I mean, sure if you noticed if you've tried any but I get it because the reward has to be pretty good to make yeah. it worth doing the mini game. Like even if it's fun, even if it's great content, like I think the majority of the player base only wants to do stuff that's worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, so it, that's hard to balance a mini game because if you make it like the best XP in the game, then no one's going to do the actual skill. Yeah. Um, or if you make it give like insane gear that's like best in slot at multiple places, then people aren't going to use regular weapons and armor. So um, I don't know the best way to balance mini games. I think it's hard to do. Spotlights might be like a good start, like, you know, for a week during the month or, you know, for one month during the year, like this is the best agility XP in the game, but then the rest of the year it's not. Um, but it would also have to be like pretty close to the regular XP rate, maybe just like slightly better. Because otherwise... XP. 
Just bonus XP, like 500k. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Random. That'd be good because then it warrants you to actually go do the skill. Like Barbarian Assault is the one that's good for like bonus XP and agility, fire making, and, and mining. That's still played to get that bonus XP. So it's kind of hard to get team apart from yeah, the French. Exactly, right. I, right. I, I, mm. At least I, I don't know. It's just, it's like, it's, it's hard enough. Like it's not hard, but it's like hard enough that, um, it's a very elitist thing as well. Yeah, like you have to be good all the way. It's kind of BA yeah. is like such an elitist place to be. Like if you don't do it tick perfectly, you're not going on the team kind of thing in some such nasty dude. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. But like, if more mini games were like that, I feel like more people would play them because I personally have done more BA than a lot of other mini games because I wanted that bonus XP. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like the best balanced mini game that I know of, and maybe there have been others that have come out in the past couple of years that have done it better. But I think Stealing Creation mm -hmm. was the best example of one because um, it may not be anymore, but I know at, at at the time it was like you know the best construction XP or at least very good. Um, and there are, you could be on a team and you could do it more efficiently, but it wasn't like everyone needed to be in perfect sync. It was pretty easy to do on a team. Like they tell you to go mine this pile and then you go mine that pile. You know, it's fairly simple directions to follow. Um, and then all the XP was bonus. It's not like you're getting construction XP. You yep. still have to go train it. But at the very least, mm -hmm. you can cut down on the time and cost quite a bit. And it doesn't scale with level, which is the biggest thing, in my opinion, because it's probably one of the most efficient things to actually do on like low to mid level skills. Hmm. So, uh, like, uh, even if you're level 20, you're going to get the same amount of bonus experience as long as you perform well. Right, but with stealing creation to get the most points, you needed like level eighty fishing and mining to like mine those higher tier. Oh nodes. yeah, of course. But you could still easily hit the goal uh, without the higher tier nodes because I done it on a lower level account uh, like last year or something. And you can still do it. You just need to know the mini game more. But you can do it at the lower levels and still reach a, a decent amount of points an hour, which means that you're gonna get a ton of bonus XP. It's just more AFK at higher levels, I guess, because you don't have to constantly do it because you reach that goal much quicker. But it's no, never mind. I was going to say something, but my brain was just like, "Nah, not today, boy." <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree. Steel and Creation is a really, really good example, and I feel like if more mini games were like that or rebalanced, because a lot of that isn't great at the like it's when you it's start bad. higher levels, it's really, really bad compared to bad. what it's it fun though. Used like to it's be. a fun, fun mini game. I, I did it on Legacy mode on stream once. It's really good. <laughs> I That's did like, uh, Soul Wars for the first time in like, I don't know, six years or something. So easy. Like, it's so it's, fun, man. It's so easy, though. I mean, like, yes and no, because trees. we had like the same amount of people on each team and like we all had like decent gear and stuff, right? So, yes, the avatar is easier to kill, but it's still crazy because like you're just slamming each other up. And it's just so fun, man. It was, it was <laughs> such a good time. It really, really was. And we had like a, I think it was like 15 versus 15 or something. And it was really, really fun. Because okay. I do masses every Sunday and chat votes on like what we do. And they voted for mini games and they voted for uh, for Soul Wars. And Wait. We've, done, we've done like uh, Castle Wars, we've done Soul Wars, we've done Pest Control. Uh, Soul Wars and Castle Wars are definitely some of the more enjoyable ones. Sorry, I was thinking of Pest Control. I was saying it was easy. Pest Control is super easy. Oh, yeah. Pest Control is like Sorry, boring at this point. Like we done it, and it was just it was it was just not fun. Like because it, it was just way too easy. <laughs> so, um, I I got lost again, dude. Damn, I I need more tea and coffee. So is Void still useful anywhere? I no, it's really. good, but it's not. It's, it's outperformed. It's not bad or anything. It's just I can't really It's not good. Think of anyone using Void since the advent of like augmented armors. Yeah, exactly. So Void used to be amazing to do next with, so and people would use it. But now that you can augment armor and you get all of the perks, Void is just nowhere near as good. Like, there's no point in using Void when you can use augmented armor. Do even it's still gonna yeah, be if, better. If you don't have invention locked, that's why it's not like it's not like it's instantly bad. But if you, if you're like you really coming be, back, <laughs> should you really be doing solo next without invention? Uh, I mean, it's possible, right? Yeah, it no, is definitely. Of... It's definitely possible. But what I'm saying is, like, yeah, don't, if don't your touch. goal is to solo next, then I wouldn't really bother getting void just because you can't be bothered to get invention. Oh no, 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 no. You don't know what I mean? It. Like, yeah, don't yeah. get it. 
I mean, oh, oh, do you mean if you come back, you have it in your bank? Yeah, that's what I mean. No, no, no. Don't please anyone listening. Don't get <laughs> void. Don't waste your time. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, dude. if you have it in your bank, then sure. Like, if it's like a rebuild or something, because it doesn't cost you money, like that's okay. But yeah, are, yeah, you you definitely need like a, also overloads are like almost a must for solo next because of the stat drain, right? Kind of. Yeah, you need them. Oh, were you guys um, PV? I mean, back in like. 2013 like really recently after the evolution of combat came out no yeah i, I was, was a noob because i remember um so dragros came out like right mm -hmm. away after the evolution yep. of combat and player run ports were either right before that or right after that i don't remember but i know that when people started getting dragors and tetsu solo next became possible for like the first time simply because i don't remember if it was because of the hp boost or um or you just like had enough defense to kind of just tank her, but it became not only feasible, but like really, really easy to do with that exact gear setup. And all kinds of people were just soloing next with Dragors and Tetsu. And they, that's kind of what made next like the boss that she is today. Cause they had to update her mechanics to make her able to like, you know, pray against the styles that were, you were mm -hmm. using and they had to make her do more damage. And, um, but I just remember like so many people taking advantage of that and that being like the first, um, kind of like advent of high level pvm because prior to that like there was cal fight king and there was next but most people did it in groups and for the most part it was easy to do there weren't a whole lot of mechanics to worry about yeah and eoc definitely impacted that and what i like about kk which like no one really mentions nowadays because it's like been out for so long and it's like an easy boss now KK was like the first boss with EOC and it was made to showcase EOC abilities and it's the only boss that uses a variety of EOC abilities back at you and I think that's absolutely incredible. I mean like, yeah it's it, it was funny because um when KK first came out I went to a few KK masses cuz a lot of people were doing KK mm, masses yeah. um instead of actually learning the boss but so many people at those masses were not even using abilities at all. They would just turn on <laughs> um, momentum, yeah. which was kind of like the predecessor to revolution and all that. And they would just like stand there and smack the boss and not even do anything. It was, <laughs> it was essentially like they were just trying to play old RS, um, but on this new boss that had mechanics. And KK would just like wipe half the team out every single time he entered magic phase because no one knew what they were doing. I, I kind of... I, I wish I experienced that. I only experienced like trio uh, or four man KK in like 2013 when I pretty much leeched uh, of a friend who was like very good, geared out, and the other person was fairly good as well. And I was just there sitting there with magic and leeching. But uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, just seeing people smack KK a little bit, magic phase, and then just die. It kind of reminds me of like stream masses, but you know, people are probably like more clueless back then. Because now everyone knows how to do KK. If you see big blue balls, you're gonna run. I did a few stream masses at KK, mm -hmm. and um, you got people every single time you went to a magic phase because it just spawns so many. Um, if you oh, have yeah. a room full of twenty people, you know, like it's impossible to dodge everything. It's yeah. I mean, you 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 whip out the devotion for that, or uh, your barricade, or your you can res mm -hmm. or deflect. Uh, I mean, Res only works for one of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But the thing is, a lot of people don't know how KK's mechanics work, and if you do certain abilities, it triggers KK to do certain abilities. So you can literally force KK to barricade. Or you can force him to stun again. Yeah, like, there's yeah, or... so many cool things that you could do, and, like, that bot <laughs> is such a good, intricate boss in the way it actually works, and... I think it really showcased EOC in such a good way. And I don't think EOC would have been as good as what it is now if KK wasn't the first boss that was released. If that makes sense. Yeah, and just like the 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 upgrade that Dragors were over every single other weapon that was in the game at the time was Ooh. kind of insane. And it may have been too much power creep. <laughs> Uh, maybe in hindsight they would have rather gone to like tier 85s instead of tier 90s right mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Um, but there was so much hype surrounding Dragors and the boss. I think it um, like brought a lot of excitement to a community that was pretty jaded about mm -hmm. the combat system changing for the most part. The so, yeah. Right. And I, I think it was a, I think it was a great update at the time. How yeah. much and were they? A pop like two, uh, 250? No, nah, they were like 800 on release, and then they went down to about 300. Yeah. They they they, yeah, like they fluctuated. Set. 
to imagine like for 200 it, to 300 for quite a while yeah imagine doing like your four or five man uh kk right like the the, the groups back then or whatever mm-hmm. you're getting like a 300 mil drop in 2013 exactly. dude <laughs> Paw. That's like the equivalent insane. of like so like release or whatever getting the crossbow. Yeah, Sorry. and I remember doing QBD with Drygles for the first <laughs> time ever. And mate, it was so satisfying. Like just clobbering Clocked. QBD. It was it was so much fun. And like really testing out EOC abilities and stuff and trying to do like damage and everything was, was so enjoyable. And then they released Farago and like such an amazing boss again. And I, I just feel like some of that like amazing boss hype and stuff just really doesn't happen nowadays. It's it's a shame no. we don't get no. enough. We uh, when you look so uh you you chat for a sec. I just want to look up one thing and I'll I'll let you know. Yeah. I mean sp- speaking of like uh um so so uh for example I don't think the hype for Telos was that high because it was such a I mean, I'm not saying it's low, but compared to probably like Virago or some KK, uh, the amount of players, because it's a solo boss, you can't really leech off a friend to teach you. Uh, so I think that's that's why there were like less people hopping in straight on release than uh, those group bosses. Because uh, yeah. like I'd say AOD was probably more popular than uh, Telos on release. I Especially think... after they found out the one dropped. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. I think a big part of why Virago was so hyped is because it was like we had no knowledge of what the mechanics were when it first came out right Mm -hmm. and it was a big team boss and people were going in there with six seven eight i don't know how many people were uh in teams on release but there were large teams um and it took so long to get the first kill um and it was just kind of like this event on twitch where all these teams were trying to get the first Virago kill and no one knew the mechanics so every team was just wiping um, and just like incrementally <laughs> learning more and more. And it, like the whole community kind of had to like share like, oh, when you're on third pay- phase, you have to like clear your bleeds or whatever the case may be. Like it, it, it just felt like all the community was kind of working together to learn this boss for the first time and kind of help each other get the first kill. And I think that's part mm-hmm. of what like contributed to how good of a moment that was. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the same applied with Solak. It's just we're not getting it very often. Like, I remember oh, so no. many people going for Solak on release, including myself, and getting that first kill felt so satisfying because it was such a difficult boss and the mechanics were so crazy to learn on the fly. It was, it was, it was really, really cool. But what I looked up and what I wanted to find out is, is showcasing, like, I guess, how little boss we've had recently. So in 2013, Calfight King came out in January with Exiled Calfight Queen with it. Then Virago came out in July. Then Rise of the Six came out in November. So in 2013, we had Calfight King, Virago, and Rise of the Six, which are huge bosses all in all. And like, then we look at it now, we had Solak mm-hmm. in 2018, we had AOD in 2017, and we had Telos in 2016. And we I haven't mean, had it... anything since 2018 with Solak. I mean, we've had elite dungeons mixed in there, if you count those as bosses, but like, the big They're boss type. Big. Yeah, but like, you know, the last elite dungeon was last year anyway, right? So... Yeah. Even then, we're we're still at least a year since we've had a boss, and then two years since we've had a actual like boss, boss, boss like Solak, and, mm-hmm. it, and then we could get three huge ones back then, but like nothing now. It's just a little bit of a shame. I, I wonder how, because uh, a the team, I mean the team was bigger, or maybe not. I, I'm not no, sure. I don't think so. Jagex has nearly 400 employees. Oh, yeah, but how many of them are like from old school? No. Less than R three for sure. Oh, okay. But like, okay, well, we have a boss coming this year, so there's, uh, unless <laughs> yes, they delay it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. December, we got a right? boss coming this year, yeah. We should, uh, although, you know, Mr. Dino Boy, Mr. Dino Boy. It'd be cool, yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I know just... what you mean. It's kind of sad, because archaeology is cool and all, but yeah, like, I would have preferred, uh, like, a few big bosses. Hmm. Even if, if I'm like not like a top PVM, like if it's too hard for me, I probably won't do it very much like Telos. Like there's no reward in me like dying constantly, mm. trying to get up. Personally, I don't like it. But I... um hmm? but like no, uh, yeah, you carry on. Sorry. But like Solak or, or or raids or elite dungeons, you know, that's that's kinda like my level. Yeah, and the new boss will be similar to that, right? Like hundred percent Telos, they said, or yeah, whatever. But like it's just annoying because 
there was so much that they gave and there were so many updates. Same as like quests, right? Promise. There, Promises. I, I just, mm, I just feel fest. like <laughs> we've, gone, we've gone from such awesome updates and we've been spoiled. So now that we're not being spoiled, it feels bad. And I feel like that's what a lot of the people that either have stopped playing or are getting bored are feeling because the, the amount of quests by year was huge. We'd get so many quests and now we get like a couple, <clears throat> like a handful. It's yeah, just, it's just one of those things. I where... mean, like one, yeah, or two, so... like not even a handful, one <laughs> and then or we'll, two. Yeah, we get one or two <laughs> big loop. quests and then a Slime couple of little loop. ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. Was... Well, don't you think that? Um, I think when EOC came out, like the RS team had a vision, like we want tier ninety weapons and armor in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, and they completed that vision, but and then they moved oh. on to tier ninety twos eventually. But like, what what is the next vision? You know, because they need. Is, is it just going to be purely like spec weapons or situational yes. weapons situational. from now on? And, and abilities. Don't forget abilities. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, they've they've pretty much... Your melee, I'm sure you've noticed, Munkle, uh, that melee is... Actually, no, maybe not. Two weeks is too little for that. It's it's. I don't know if you can hear that background noise, by the way. Can you hear that? No. Good. So it's basically melee escape. Now, I told you that in PM as well. Like, if you're going to get... Drygors, uh, like instead of that spear, you're better off getting Drygors and then later getting a scythe as well, and then after like, getting abilities and all that stuff. But um, melee has like a terror storm mole. You have the spear of annihilation from archaeology, the massive spear. You have all those mutated abilities. You have a scythe at T90. You have a ZGS. You have Kopesh's. Uh, and basically, what they th what they what they probably will do is add uh, situational weapons like the Inquisitor Staff or the Terrace Storm all um, to the other skills and like I don't know tier ninety one or tier, tier tier ninety or tier ninety two weapons or whatever with extra accuracy at certain bosses. I think they'll keep doing that and add mutated abilities yeah. to mutated concentrated blast when please. Yes, dude, I said the same thing. Let me bleed my asphyxiate, please. Uh, please. That's that's mutated barge. Yeah, but like. Yeah. I mean, no, I fix it. I mean, like, how how would that? So, mutated concentrated blast would just be like fury, where it takes it from three. Yeah, yeah, okay. One. I don't yeah, know sorry. how they would do the bleed this fix but that would be pog as well, right? But like, mutated whack. If I, I told know. you that range out DPS is melee on a fair few bosses, would sorry, you me? say that again. Range yeah. out DPS is melee on a fair few bosses. Oh, like yeah, probably like raids. So That's... the way the way that melee works is its burst damage is the best in the game. And it's really, really strong for like speed kills and stuff. But range mm -hmm. has the best DPM over a long period of time with optimal ECB. setup, right? So it's like if you're comparing optimal melee to optimal um, range, range means that you're going to have all of it. You're going to Eldritch Crossbow spec. You're going to then occasionally swap to your Blight Bounds to Needle Strike. You're going to yes, use everything. Yeah, Seren Godbo spec. You're going to utilize literally everything um, with. Hydrix back bolts and whenever they proc you swap to ruby back bolts etc you know you got all of the yep. different stuff going on uh, and then use. melee would apply the same you'd have your zgs spec you'd have your spear for bleeds you'd have your <laughs> you know kopeshes to camp and like all of that stuff and you'd swap to cleave uh, for 188 percent weapon damage alongside your decimates and stuff. yeah so like it's all the sweaty push. stuff right like... yeah so everything you would imagine for sweaty stuff range actually out dps is melee but the one that is the worst now is mage Rick, uh, I mean, Inquisitor Staff takes it decent in certain places, but it's still sometimes better to range your melee there. So kind of sad. Which yeah, is I weird think... because we had Magescape for quite a while. Exactly. Yes. I think what they wanted to do is make it so Mage wasn't the best style, so they buffed the other ones, but now Mage is starting to lack a little bit. So I think um, if they could make something like Concentrated Blast in a mutated form or whatever would be amazing. And all in all, even though you, you called it melee scape, and I agree, melee is my favorite style, and I think melee is the most versatile, especially when it comes to bossing and slayer. Easy. You can even use the SGB with melee, like yeah, exactly. Ingenuity of humans, and clap that boy. Bomb bombs made mage even more redundant because now you can just yep. bomb a thing and it bones it. So all of that being said makes sense, but at the same time, I think this is the most balanced that the combat triangle has been in RuneScape. Oh, okay. Because oh. it used to be magescape, like Munkle said. Yeah, Mage was just king yeah, everywhere. The, we had a period where like Virtus Wand and Book were better in some locations than Dragors, even despite being like ten levels lower. I mean, 
I, I don't know. I, I hate how magic sucks now. It doesn't suck. <laughs> if you if you want to if you want to compete, you have to four take. I don't like four take. I'm a lazy boy. I like to just I don't know. Be a be a mage and just vibe. <laughs> That's a really bad argument, but um, <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. But uh, I, I'm sure like uh, the the casual boys listening, um, casual players can agree. Uh, I don't know, Mike. Micro, you you use a lunging switch and all that stuff for melee, right? Uh, sometimes I don't do that much group bossing, but I have well, I have like flanking and all of that. A uh, lunging oh. I have on my trim mask work spear. So oh, of course, use lunging. that in like yeah. solo bosses, but. I, I do have flanking and stuff, but I don't use it that often because I don't really do group PBM. Yes. I know yeah. how to do it, uh, but I'm, I I just don't do it really. I, um, and I am kind of like a one trick melee user, really. I don't really know how to optimally do range and magic. I don't four tick and stuff like that. So yeah, neither, neither. Melee, I'm fine with, but the others. I ain't gonna do very good with <laughs> melee. Makes it easy for you to be good. That's why I recommend it to Mongols. Well, as, as you mutated barge, you just Bam! Barge in, click assault, use assault keybind, boom! Nice bigger deal on the table. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> typical me, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Melee about, how do you both feel about bosses where like one combat style is just ineffective, like a boss where melee does next to no damage or just has super high defense against melee, but not the other two styles or something? So. I think... I think it'd be fine if there's like one for each style or whatever. Yes. Like, yes. so if one boss is released and you have to mage it, then one boss is released and you have to range it. Uh, like, if if you have it in that regards, I think it's fine. Gold Restrenture one, maybe. Like, you can't, you can't. Uh, yeah. What is it? You can't melee armament, right? Yeah, exactly. Even with for a example, scythe, you can't. If you could, it. though, oh, dude, rip yeah. little bird boy. So yeah, I, I I agree. I think that'd be really really cool, honestly, Mungle. I'm just wondering if, like, is that, like, a band-aid solution to an unbalanced co combat triangle, and it's not really necessary in the long run? Because, um, I don't know. I, like, we've had lots of bosses in the past. Like, I think, isn't General Gardor, like, really strong against magic or range or something? Range, or at least he yeah. was range, one range. point. Like, you, you, you just can't use one combat style against Yeah, he ranks you as range because his melee hits just destroy you. <laughs> and, I, like, I don't know, does that add anything to the game? Or is that just kind of like a band-aid solution? Actually, I don't think it really adds much. Like you're just uh, you're yeah, kind of forcing players to to use a certain style. I don't know if it's like bad or good. It's just it is what it is. I don't think it like makes something better or last longer or make I don't know drops more profitable because less people have X you know combat style blah blah blah. Like if you were to release a boss now, that can only be killed with magic. Or something. Uh, I don't know if that would really add anything. Apart or from maybe, making people angry. Or maybe the better solution is like Araxor. Because like you can mage Araxor, right? And it's, oh, yeah. But it's just annoying because she constantly melee distances you and uses bleeds on you and stuff. So it's yep. just more irritating to deal with than the other combat styles. But like it's still totally doable if you want to And it's also more reason. rewarding, right? Because of the fang. It has a 50% chance when you mage instead of 25 so actually, it gives you an incentive to actually mage, even though it might be a little bit more difficult or more. Rax annoying. is such a good example. Yeah, good point, Micro. Yeah, and and Michael. Yeah, to be honest, if they do like Rax, it's almost Rax is a perfect boss. Almost. Oh, Rax. Yeah, I agree. The, the mechanics to Rax are insane, and that'd be cool. Uh, another Rax where it changes its combat style depending on what your combat style is. Completely yeah. fine with that. Yeah, for sure. I would prefer that to Telos, because uh, dude, I can I can hear like people who like PVM screeching, dude, it's too easy. I don't want no uh, piss easy racks kind of thing. I mean, you can make a easier version of like a harder version of racks, right? But like the the fundamentals yeah. can still be the same. The fact that yeah, 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 you know, different paths have different things whenever they're open, like Rago yeah. as well and stuff. And then oh, actually, th those type of things are really really cool as well, in my opinion, where it constantly changes because then it means different weeks gonna be different things. I think Solak and and Telos and stuff do get a bit stagnant because they're always the same. So having yeah. time to mix them up a little bit just gives people a, 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 another thing to learn or another bit of fun to have. I, I, I like that system, but I'm, I'm not sure if Michael wanted to say that. I don't like that. At the same time, it's good, but I don't like that um, you have to make a weapon with different parts. I Because it's like, if you do a boss a lot and you get like really dry in one bit, for example, the signets at, um, at uh, Ascensions, right? It really 
annoys me that I just can't finish a Nox weapon. Like, I completely understand that. I think they kind of countered it with gold, uh, Elite Dungeon 3 because you can sell the parts. Yes, exactly. So if they would do it like that with parts of racks, mm -hmm. like it's with different mechanics, uh, if you choose a different path, that's perfect. And then that also leads into like, if you, if you were going to do racks, like a certain path would be worth more than another one. And mm -hmm. it might be more annoying to do. So the one that people like the least would also be the most rewarding. And I think stuff like that is really, really beneficial. Yes, exactly. To exactly. Like make people struggle a little more for more reward. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, um, I'm not sure how Monk, uh, Monkle feels about like split drops. Or maybe in Rage, actually. But you haven't done Tell so that's going to be like a hard question. Well, I kind of wanted to ask you guys what you felt was the best designed boss slash drop system it doesn't have to be the same the same answer um but like what you think in terms of mechanics is your favorite versus what you think in terms of like the rewards is your favorite racks is mine personally uh if we're talking like overall boss experience i'd say elite dungeons specifically elite dungeon 2 is 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 best um because you have three bosses they have different mechanics. Um, the only thing, reason I don't like ED3 more, because Ambassador is such a good boss. It really is. It's, it's challenging alone. It's not as hard in a group. Uh, the rewards can be very good if you get lucky, but the only problem with Elite Dungeon 3 is the first two bosses don't have a drop that's worth anything. Mm -hmm. Well, in Elite Dungeon 2, every boss drops a codex, uh, the, the, the overpowered melee codexes. So Mutated Barge, or Greater Barge, Fury, and uh, Flurry. That's perfect. What about you, yeah. Michael? Well, I haven't tried Elite Dungeons, and with the amount that you guys have hyped them up, I'm sure I'm going to really love them. <laughs> you will. Um, but my favorite boss in terms of mechanics has been Virago. Oh. Um, and I also really like the drop system because I like that you get drops for doing different things. Like I, I have never really DPSed much at Virago. Um, I've almost entirely just done bomb tank um mm -hmm. partly because i liked you you don't have to um compete with other people for the drops um and i generally <laughs> didn't have the best gear or the best rotations um <laughs> when i did when <laughs> i, I see did where DPS, you uh it was it was difficult to get drops unless you went with people who are more in, inexperienced um but i i also just really love the fact that there's um a role that's so different and your goal isn't to do damage right it, your your role is something completely different, but you still have mm -hmm. a chance of getting rewards. So, when it comes to like reward system, I think Rax is the best. But when it comes to like in terms of uh, like roles and stuff, I think Virago and Yaka do that best. Uh, Yaka doesn't give you like better rewards for doing a certain role like Virago does. But the fact that there's like seven, eight roles at Yaka is is amazing to me. So like your ten man team, most of the people are going to be doing something, which is 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 really really cool. It's same as Rago, right? You're all doing specific stuff, which doesn't always necessarily mean that you're going to be DPSing, but you are still going to be a benefit to the team with whatever you're doing. Yeah, I'm a huge proponent of like different roles at bosses. Um, and I I haven't done a whole lot of Yaka, but the real the little bit I did do, you know, I tried. I like that there's these little minor roles. Like your role can be like to go revive the, um, mm -hmm. you know, base tank, you know, or to like go pick up planks or whatever. Um, and I just like these little interruptions beyond just oh run to the pool and and mindlessly use your your same rotation on the on the guy when he pops up. I yeah. I, I love that there's more than that. I think Rago's even better than Yaka sometimes because of the weekly rotations as well, right? So like those type of things add even more to the boss because. You don't just have to learn the boss, you have to learn the boss like five times in different scenarios, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and I, I love how there's kind of like, you get these Raga weeks, like whatever your favorite rotation is. Like I, I don't know what the, the fastest is now, um, but I just remember like getting really excited for like, you know, team split week or something, because mm -hmm. it's easy. Um, yeah. And it's not that, you know, like your whole team is like, oh yeah, I'll Raga during this week, because um, we're not going to get a chance to do our favorite rotation again for a month. Yeah. Huh. I haven't experienced enough Virago to really have a good opinion about Virago, so I'm not the biggest fan of Virago 
as, as in like very, like very time actually gating. doing it. Yeah, like. Yeah, like I like the boss and the mechanics, but nowadays it's it's very very time gated, so it doesn't matter how good you are. It's like you're always gonna be time gated. Yes, at the same I... time, that's a good thing because it keeps energies at a good price because you can't just kill like a, a hundred per hour. You know, I noticed that especially with uh uh with Trio Virago. Even then, you can like out DPS the phase and still have to wait. People out DPS the phase as a duo nowadays. It's insane, <laughs> but um. In general, is there anything else you want to say, Mr. Munkle? Like anything else you want to uh, like address or talk about in terms of you or your channel, RuneScape, etc.? I think mostly just um, I think you guys have had some good ideas in terms of like checking out uh, content that's came came the past few years um, as kind of like some sort of you know YouTube goal, <laughs> mm-hmm. but. Um, one thing I did want to ask about a little bit, because this is a comment I've seen a couple times. Um, I can't remember if it was in the friends chat or on a video I uploaded, um, but people have kind of been saying like they don't see much of a space for kind of like mid-level, um, whether it's like PVM or just content in general, for like kind of a mid-level, more casual player on YouTube. Um, and there's there's a lot of like high-level pvm and that's not like a bad thing or anything but um just that there's not much of a space for um like kind of the everyman who's maybe not an elite player not like a nearing comp cape player um who's whose goal is you know kind of the end game stuff uh i i i would argue that that you you're, you're gonna you're gonna be more, more popular on youtube if you uh focus on mid-level content uh maybe not everyone right like if you're trying to get into the scene no but if you're if, you, if you're talking like about yourself if you want to like upload a god Wars dungeon one series i'm sure not everyone will enjoy it or god Wars dungeon two but because you just came back and because you you have been a part of the community uh that would work so were you thinking about doing mid-game content is that what you mean well i guess i'm mostly just like wondering is there a space for mid-game yeah. content do we think do you think like late game um, whether it's PVM or I don't know, working on comp cape requirements. Like, do you think that kind of stuff is a little bit overrepresented on YouTube, or do you think it's like pretty indicative of what people are interested in? I think it's a bit of both. Um, people will typically watch stuff that they're trying to do as well. So if they're working on comp, they'll watch comp related stuff, etc. Um, but I think for you, like what Protox was saying before he disconnected. Um, you're in a very, very good position where you could easily make content on learning as well. It doesn't just have to be, hey, look, this is like mid-tier boss or hey, look, this is a high-tier boss. It's like your pathway. So there's a lot of people in game that are scared to start higher tier PVM or go past racks or or necks and, and go experience like AOD or Solak or Telos, etc. So I think there's oh, a big space that. on like the progression side as well. So if you uploaded like mid tier content, getting back into the game, then once you're kind of like in the game and in that swing of things, then going on to like showcasing learning stuff, I think that'd help just as many people as showcasing the high level stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that jump from solo PVM to like doing group bossing is definitely a huge one. Because you were asking about like space on YouTube, right? For like mid-level content but i heard michael saying like as soon as you you've done like gotten back into the game you'll probably find yourself um getting into the high level stuff fairly easily yeah i i guess that's a that's the benefit of rs3 being it it's really easy to make money and it's really easy to level so that that mid-level space doesn't necessarily last for a whole long time i mean i guess depending on what your goals are but it doesn't take that long to get to the point where you're you know, killing Telos, or I, I don't know if Araxor is considered high level content anymore, but doing stuff like that. Yeah, it's still fairly high level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not e- like it's, it's, it might be a little easier due to Power Creep, but people that are trying to get into the boss um, don't have access to that anyway. So it's probably just as hard, uh, almost as hard as it was back then. It's just that the guides are like more in depth nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, I, f- I found Araxor to be pretty hard when you're not used to um, prayer switching and you're not used to um, 
I mean, phase four is just hard because yes. you have to prayer switch and you have to, you know, use your rotation to be somewhat effective and you have to worry about dodging the core. And if you haven't been doing like any sort of RS3 re related PVM at all in years, um, I mean, that's kind of a big step to get back into. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's that, that's what I'd like to see. Like, I, I would generally enjoy uh, seeing you die a bunch of bosses, not going to lie. <laughs> it sounds savage, I'll try but to I record my death the next time. Please, please do. I, I, I guarantee you, your viewers will like it because I, when I, I was never good at PVM, it's relatable. It, I, I, I did a video trying like next and I think Elite Dungeon 3 and some other stuff for the first time, and people loved seeing me suck at the game because it was relatable. There's, there's a bunch of players out there that might not be vocal, but they, they are really bad at PVM and they. They can appreciate relating to someone just as bad or good as them. I think there's the, the majority of players are actually not good at PVM. Um, also partly because some are just not interested or not like leveled enough. If you look at like the average player count that's like it has 199, I believe. It's not that high. Well, it's hard because it takes a lot of practice to be good at PVM and it's it's a grind. Yeah. Like it takes a long time to get there to that point. And then you have to consider, like, you have to get past the barrier of being willing to try higher level PVM in the first place. And then you have to get past the barrier of having good enough gear to get, mm -hmm. like, speed kills or whatever. And then on top of that, you have to spend, I don't know how many hours, you know, 20, 30 hours mastering a boss to the point where you're actually decent at it. Um, and, like, I, yeah, I agree. It's probably, like, the minority of the player base that's in that situation. Yeah. And once you do get up to doing a boss decently, I would argue it can be fast if you have someone telling you what to do in voice chat. That worked out very, very well for me personally. Uh, if, if you're doing oh, yeah. a boss, trust me. That's how, I, that's how I learned Rise of the Six in one night. I, there we I go. I went with someone who was very, very good at it and helps me out a lot. Mm hmm that's honestly the best way to learn. It's even better than YouTube guides or, or I, I would argue that written guides for bosses are not that useful. I'm not saying that to have people click on boss guides. I'm just saying you need to see what's going on. Um, yeah, and, and once you, what I was going to say is once you're at that, at that level, like doing a certain boss decently, there's there's a bunch more levels you need to like get up to to be to get to like certain bosses or be allowed in certain groups. Um, for example, 750k damage AOD gem, whatever it is, without poison and auras and all that stuff. It's not not that hard if you have like a decent rotation and you use a plant of feet switch, but many players uh, don't have that yet. So it depends on like what type of your like PVM you're getting into though. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna try and get into an AD team that requires you to do X amount in a gem if you're just starting. You're just looking for like a FC or a clan chat or or whatever that will help teach you the the basics. But that's if you get have a clan. I don't know why lots of people say they don't have a clan or something. It's I don't think it's that hard to join one, but I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, it isn't. But at the same time, it's like you need a good one. Um, it, yeah, and it's sometimes hard to find people that are willing to teach, right? Oh yeah, that's so, the problem, right? Yeah, no, that that's one hundred percent true. Because no one, um, many people, I sh I should say, don't want to take a, a. I hate saying uh, it's only slacks, right? Because they like doing it their way like oh this goes right this guy knows what he's doing we can just do this mm -hmm. that you know doing it for an hour especially at rots by the way i'm not sure if manko experienced that but um people can get pretty nasty at rots if you're slow and getting out and stuff or like yeah i found thinking. yeah rots is the one boss that i have experience with teaching like i wasn't the one doing the teaching but like mm -hmm. i was in the team where um you know like our fourth was being taught and had never done rots before it was very inexperienced and i <laughs> It is frustrating. I would say it's more frustrating at bosses like Yakamaru or um, Virago because if we you fail. wipe, it's such a time loss. Whereas with Rots, like you wipe, it's you teleport back and grab your stuff, and you're back in another kill in sixty seconds. Like it's not really that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well, well made argument. Raids is yeah, raids is bad. Don't use uh, no. Actually, I'm not going to say that. But there's certain friend chats that uh. Oh, if you mess up one thing, you're out, dude. I did. I did a thousand Yaka Casey with Raid FC. You just need to find the okay groups and the okay people. There's obviously going to be toxic people everywhere, but I, I don't think the FC is bad. I think anything group based has uh, 
certain yeah, individuals. That, that, yeah, exactly. Dungeoneering as well, dude. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Dungeoneering, yeah, yeah, yeah. Free and Leech the same, FC. The same as Bob Aaron Assault, that's what I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> so basically, any group content with more than three people is, like, <laughs> nasty. Or can, can be, be nasty. Can be, yeah. But then that what gives it a bad think? name and stuff, right? What do you guys think, um, like, brings that out of people? Is it, like, the competitiveness, or is it the fact that you know, you're working on, you want to hit your, whatever your kills per hour is because you're working on the pet grind or you're working on making money and you see other people as kind of like an obstacle in the way of yeah. that if they're dying and wiping you. Yes. I, yeah, I actually made a video want... about that. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. I'm about elitism and like, uh, yeah. most of the time it's people, because it, they, they, they are used to doing something in a certain period of time, making a certain amount of money or doing it with a certain, you know, a certain amount of people and if that goes differently they don't like change they just don't and that's why they get pissed off it's also depending on on the people as well right because if you say that you can do all of these things they expect it of you but if you're like saying you're a learner they don't expect it as much so like if you have all of these requirements you join this really fancy team the expectations are super high so if you foul those expectations you're letting the group down not just like one person so yeah they get angry of you because you're wasting like six people's time instead of one person's time yeah. or whatever yeah okay like if you if, if, if you lie about then it makes sense but if you like say hey i'm, I'm bad at this or like that they yeah can, then like, they shouldn't it. be like that yeah yeah but that's sometimes bad they still are right yeah i mean I, i've had my fair share of really really annoying players even 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 like people within what i would consider friends can be very um especially the ones that like very good at pvm can be very toxic mm. even if you met i don't know maybe it's the people i uh talk to so i love evil lucario man's like a god at pvm but still the nicest guy you're ever gonna meet yeah he's he's the only humble uh okay i'm not gonna say only i just don't talk to the other ones he seems very humble for his <laughs> skill level yeah very 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 so um i ha i'm not sure how long we've been going i do have like one more two time. hours i think Wow. I was going to ask about RuneScape Mobile. Uh, what do you think about that, um, Munkel? So, I don't have a whole lot of experience on RS3 Mobile. Um, I've done a decent amount on old school RS. I found it to be limiting in what you can do. Um, I mean, but it's nice. Like, I used to, um, I used to fish because I found that being like, that was one of the easier things you can do. It's like, you just click to drop or I guess tap to drop if you're on mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just, I, I walk to work. So um, that's something that's like really easy to do on the commute, right? But um, RS3 Mobile, it's, it's, it's hard. It, it drains your battery really fast. Um, oh, yeah. It doesn't run very well if you don't have a kind of higher end phone, which I don't. Um, I mean, it's, it's nice. I've, I've used it a little bit just like while watching TV and I'll do archaeology on it. But it does feel like pretty limited in what you can actually do beyond just AFK skilling. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's that's exactly what I expected you to say. Actually, didn't didn't know you used it for uh, old school though, huh? So you've 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 actually experienced the uh, the other side, like the like the e like the more simple game that's more suited for mobile, basically. I think it works better on old school. I mean, it, yeah. it still is mostly just AFK skilling on old school, and it's hard to do much else. But like with a combat system where it's click and wait, um, for the most part, like you can do a Slayer task um, on mobile, and it I mean, you don't have all your your plugins and stuff so it's not as great as doing it on your desktop but i mean it works just fine and i imagine it would probably work okay with legacy um like if you're doing if you're afk and something in your player on slayer dungeon it, it um, works fine with revo plus plus in slayer dungeon and stuff as well yeah 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 true that, that's the all i would only use it for afk and even then mm. like because it trains your during your battery if you're like um not at home you don't have a power bank. Ah, it's not really that good an idea of like to do unless you're like desperate for those gains. Yeah, my my phone overheats really easily if I have it plugged in. Um, so it's not really that fun to do anything if it's plugged in. So I just I end up kind of anno uh, avoiding mobile because it's like an annoyance. <laughs> I oh, mean, yeah. I'll use it like during my walk, you know, or or for a short time while I'm like watching a show, um, like upstairs on the TV or something. But like, I very very rarely will use it to like actually play the game in any sort of capacity just because it feels almost more annoying to use 
Would you believe there's actual players that use RuneScape 3 Mobile completely? Because I've had a few of my comments oh, yeah. and I can't believe it, dude. I was, I was very surprised. That's pretty it's, insane, I just, isn't it? I can't imagine what like questing is like. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. It's buggy. It's buggy. Are you like tabbing back and forth between like a quest guide or? Ah, uh, I mean, if you don't use a guide, but yeah, good luck for some of the quests. Yeah, it'd be very, very difficult to do quests and stuff on mobile for sure. Uh, Taki Maki did it, and apparently most, of, like a the majority of the quests were bugged. Like lots have little issues with them. Mm -hmm. He said that in his uh, mobile review. <laughs> Like, you just can't complete them. Yeah, he's, like, one of the YouTubers that pretty much did, did, like, a full series on mobile and, like, basically tried it out in depth so that everyone knows what it's like. Um, Yeah, and he, he said that questing was probably the worst part. I mean, to, to be expected. Yeah, it's, like, a nice supplement, but it's, you know... Not it's a replacement. Not, I don't yeah. think it's really supposed to be your main course meal. It's supposed to be, like, you know, your fries on the side or something. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good comparison because uh, I don't know about you guys, but you eat fries with your fingers. You do stuff on your phone with your fingers. I don't know. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> please don't do both at the same time. Thanks. Oh, yeah, don't. don't. That's kind of... Dude, oh. Let's get a salty phone. Salty, you say? I mean, if you're doing quests yeah, on mobile... Yeah, fries have salt on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can eat them bland if you like, but... Uh, a bit boring. Gordon Ramsay so, would not approve. Tastes like cobble. So, so, Protox, I'm guessing by your accent, you're from the Netherlands. Huh. You're the first person that um, realized straight away. It's probably because certain words. Or you've talked to Dutch people before. So, I, I lived in um, that oh, no. area of the world what? for, for what? about five years when I was growing up. You, you live in the Netherlands? Mm-hmm. More, more, more so in Belgium. But I did br very briefly live in the what? Netherlands. What? Yeah. Dude, that's sick. Wait, so you yeah. can, can you speak Dutch though? I think Klein beat you. Oh, dude, this is this is that could that could be in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's on his Dutch. I haven't I haven't lived over there for. Uh, I was a kid. I was a very young kid, and I was. Uh, I I did not go to public school, so I did not learn a whole lot of Dutch when I was there very little bit like a very small amount of it um but cool. when we were talking about fries like i just remember like growing up and eating frites all the time and i still eat frites i still, <laughs> I still eat frites with uh Dude, with mayonnaise what? sometimes and everyone in the u.s thinks i'm super weird wait 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 hold up so people in the u.s don't eat fries with mayonnaise no or usually ketchup or fry sauce which is ketchup what? and mayonnaise mixed well what man? The... America's weird, dude. <laughs> dude, dude, America. Damn, man. I know, like the majority of my viewer base is American. Yeah, same. Damn, you guys are weird, dude. Imagine not eating <laughs> fries with mayonnaise, dude. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, do you do you know what? I'm sorry. This is like kind of like a weird topic. But do you know what a frikandel is then? What what is sorry? Frikandel. I'm trying saying it in like an English way, but uh, I don't think so. No. Oh, like the like the sausage kind of thing, but then it's not like a sausage. It's a sausage oh, yeah. roll. No, 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 no. It's like a, wow. it's like a, like a, a meat. Like, just think of a sausage, but then it's fried. Oh, right. Weird. And it's like not that good quality meat, but it's like everyone eats it. Yeah, I've had them. Okay. I did not remember. What, I did not remember what they were called, but yeah, I've had them. This is really this. Uh, you've never said this in your videos, right? That you were lived in the Netherlands when you were younger. I I think I've mentioned it to a few people, but I don't think I've ever said it in a video before. Yeah. Exclusive content, dude. It's all at the end, though. Monkey Sunky <laughs> Dutch. If anyone's listening at this point, please comment Monkey Sunky Dutch. Thank you. Yeah, I just I really wish I remembered more because, like, when I moved back to the states, um, my parents never really learned any Dutch. I learned a little bit just because, um, I mean that's. Like older people all speak English, right? But at least kids, um, when I lived there, you know, fifteen plus years ago, um, kids my age for the most part didn't speak in English, you know. So to to talk oh, yeah. to anyone, you had to pick up Dutch. And when you're a kid, you learn languages so quickly. Um, so I learned a little bit. I just really wish I retained more of it. But like when you move back to the states and you don't know anyone that's Dutch and you never have any reason to practice, it's it's really hard to retain yeah. any yeah. language skills you pick up. It just gets out like your long term memory. It just just disappears. Mostly, at least. Oh, that's that's that's. 
Really cool to know, honestly. That's I, I was very surprised to um, hear you guess, because uh, the majority of people that um, find out I'm Dutch are surprised, because I have this weird mix of accents. I, 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 depending on... Even, some Dutch people hear it, um, including you. Well, you're not Dutch, but you're like, you've lived there. And some people never know until I mention it, so it's kind of cool. Maybe it's just like the people I knew, but it sounds very similar to most of what I can remember of like Dutch people speaking English. They they usually speak like this. They uh, they have a very different uh, pronunciation of uh, things. Okay, that Is was it bad. Is just because you're like used to speaking English, so you've lost a bit more of your accent than normal? I've lived in London, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, as that... also as a kid, so that maybe maybe that's the difference. M so Michael, I learned. have you have you have you lived in Germany or the Netherlands when you were younger by any chance? Nah, I kind of want to know now, dude. Nah, I've always lived in England. Oh. We can't bring it full circle. Always <laughs> the free head feels bad, man. Oof, dude. <laughs> so, um, is there anything uh, you guys would like to add? Otherwise, it might be a good idea to to wrap it up because it's two hours and like that's a two long... hours went so quick, man. What dude, I, I I I feel like we started ten minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the viewers are listening still and they <laughs> felt like it was ten minutes ago. Normally people re like watch a podcast that's like one hour, twenty minutes, and then they're like, Oh, I wish this was longer. So now they're actually gonna get a longer one. Hopefully it's not too long. Yeah. Oh boy, dude. I feel like one one and a half hours is kind of the sweet spot spot for podcasts because that's like how long most podcasts are. Mm -hmm. Um but that's <laughs> that's okay. Also, we were I feel like we were super rambly for a lot of those podcasts. That's a podcast, though, in my opinion. Like, it's not like uh, I don't know any podcast that like really well. I mean, maybe like Joe Rogan or H three H three. They're fairly good. I mean, at the start, it was pretty structured. We were asking lots of questions to Monko and that, and then we just got onto like RuneScape topics. Yeah, that's the good thing about podcasts, though. It just flows into all kinds of stuff. It's like I thought we were going to run out of topics this time. I've never had that in a podcast before. Like, there's a couple of things we might not have covered, but it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Great podcast. So, do you want to say anything in particular, Mister Munkle? Um, it's good to be back to RS3. Um, I feel like almost everyone I talk to has hyped up Elite Dungeons, so I probably <laughs> should get on that and try them. Um, and yeah, this is fun. And if we have more topics, maybe we could do this again. Ah, oh, that'd be perfect. Sounds and like um, good, yeah. I look forward to more content, and I'm sure everyone else does as well. It's so nice to just see people coming back. I mean, a friend made a video on RS3 recently as well, which was really, really cool to see. Like, I don't know, I just, I feel like a lot of the older YouTubers and stuff would still enjoy RS3 if mm -hmm. they gave it a go again kind of I thing. That, that there's one more guy I, I really want to mention real quick. Uh, what's the name again? Nightmare RH has also kind of returned. And uh, uh, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> yeah, let's. I, I could impersonate him, but I'm not going to because it's not family friendly. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, he's he's uh he's he's old school. He was. Um, I don't even know when he started RS, but like when I was playing RS as a kid, I remember watching him. Yeah. Huh? Good times, dude. Good times. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Munkle and Mr. Protox. I appreciate talking to you both. And uh, hopefully yeah. it wasn't too long, but it was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been fun. Thanks for coming on, dude.